This life was all I ever wanted. I'm not leaving. Not yet. I was hoping you'd say that. We gotta hit the streets, make some money. People like us must destroy people like him. Buckle up. Get Showtime free at Showtime.com. Man, welcome back to a special edition. Man, I'm of... excited for this. <laughs> I never, <laughs> hey, I never interrupt your introduction, but well, to, let excited, me do it today. You, you got it. You got it, Jack. My guy, uh, a mentor to me. Somebody I look up to, somebody who's been giving me the game. And, Hall of uh, Famer. Hall of Famer, been motivating me on this media side. Somebody I look up to, my brother, the OG, big homie, Uncle Shay Shay, Shannon Sharp, yeah. man. Man, thanks for having me on. Man, thank coming you. on, man. Ah! Oh, man. Hey, them hands you know, are moisturized like Jack. We just uh, had a little, <laughs> we just had a little uh, pre-shoot Jerkins discussion. Today. So he asked for some lotion. He's like, people see everything on the internet. He asked me for some lotion. So I handed him some jerks. He said, Matt, you got this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, it fits my complexion. That he needs something a little stronger for, uh, for people I his gave it tone. To him. What, what you use? But did I did, you? I did use that Jergens, which yeah. is like water. And then he handed me some Crisco. So yeah. I'm <laughs> That's a good mix. Right yeah, you gotta find some real friends. That Nubian, somewhere. that Nubian lotion. So find somewhere in the middle. But man, thank you for being here, man. man we appreciate it. Oh, man, who, who's he? Is it? Is it? Is, is Shannon Sharp the Fox Sports analyst here, or Uncle Shay Shay here? It all depends. Man, look at, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hoping at the end of the day, when this airs at some point in time, because I know it's going to air, I still have my job. <laughs> I, got, I like them checks, guys. Well, I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't mad at you. Let's we want get, you to keep getting them. Let's get into it. So we were talking to before, I mean, you were a Hall of Famer, obviously, superstar before superstars were in the fishbowl. Mm -hmm. So now you're, mo a lot of people don't know how great of a football player they know you for what you're doing on Undisputed. T yeah. Talk about that a little bit. It is because I meet people a lot of time and people will walk up to me and like ask me, how do I know so much about football? <laughs> and I just like, you know, I studied the game a lot. I, I, don't, I, don't, right. I, don't, I don't tell them uh, that I actually play. I was like, I studied the game a lot. And, you know, I watch football and, you know, I've been around it for a long time. But it is. I mean, most of the people don't know me because I've been retired 16 years now. Crazy, um, right. And so people don't, re 16 years is a long time considering that, Everything now got people are watching it on their on their phone. Mm -hmm. They get all their information from different. But for me, I don't really know how I would have handled it because everything you're under a microscope. Right. You look at guys like LeBron and KD, or you look at Brady, and everything is critique. We have all these debate shows where we talk about every move, every dribble, every mm -hmm. possession is critique. I don't know how I could have handled it because I, I, you know. I like my privacy. Right. Um, I've never been a guy that liked to be out in the public side. Um, I only went to one party in, in college. Um, I didn't hang out really. I went out maybe once every other month when I was in, in when I was played. So I kind of like, you know, being to myself and I don't want cameras in my face right. all the time mm -hmm. and knowing everything that you say now. And what I tell guys now, when you leave your home, sometimes you're in on. your home, you got to automatically believe that you're being filmed, you're no being question. recorded. Mm -hmm. And so you must be on your behavior at all times. Right. How do you think that would have changed, though? Like you said, it wasn't only uh, in your profession on the field, but it was in your personal life, mm -hmm. too, day-to-day, -to -day, grocery store trips, whatever. whatever. How, how do you think that would have affected you, especially seeing you wanted to be so private? Man, it had been tough because I told a lot of people no. I didn't want to sign up, and that's one of the reasons why I never lived in the city where I played because I wanted some privacy. I didn't want to be Shannon Sharp all the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go to the grocery store and ask anything about what the Broncos going to be like this season or winning the Super Bowl. I just wanted to go and sometimes could go because I moved to Atlanta. And some people, if you're a really diehard fan, they knew who I was early on. But as we started to win more, started going to Super Bowls, I was on TV, I became a better player. People started to recognize me. But the way I explain myself to uh, people, guys, I says I'm a normal guy with an extraordinary job. Mm -hmm. And people that know me, that see me behind, the, off the camera, they see how, like, dude, you're really normal. Mm -hmm. And I am. Mm -hmm. um, and I like it like that. But to have a camera and everything get time. critiqued right. and analyzed. It's a tough way to live. I'm. Can you imagine 
if we had cameras like when we were growing up in high school because tweets that guys said oh, man. five, ten years ago Guilty. is coming back to bite them in the mm -hmm. butt. So now you just you learn from others' mistakes. Right. And they say, you know, why a wise man learns from other mistakes. A fool mm -hmm. learns from his own. Mm -hmm. So you see what has gotten people into trouble, and then you try to stay clear of that. Yeah, no, I like that. What was your, Did you see yourself talking about football post-career? Like, when did you start getting into the analyst space? Because we well, know you was always a talker. I was. I was always, <laughs> and it didn't make, look, if we, if we didn't play good, I'd say we didn't play good. We were terrible. I was bad. The <laughs> offensive line was bad. Right. Receiver was bad. Defense was bad. But they respected that, though. They did. They did. People don't want to hear, look, they don't want to hear that normal coach. And I understand you got to sometimes you got to be politically correct. But it's like, at some point in time, you got to tell the truth. Today we just weren't good. Right. Shannon just weren't good. I, you know, I didn't, I couldn't hold on to the ball. I missed these blocks at the point of attack. Just be honest, mm -hmm. and and people appreciate that. And I think that's what kind of made me a, a very good leader because I think for leadership also, you have to know each guy. You know, basketball, you got twelve guys in the locker room. Every guy's different. They mm -hmm. come from different backgrounds, and so different things will motivate them. Different things will tick guys off. Mm -hmm. Some guys you can confront. Some guys you confront, they're going to bust you in the mouth. Yeah. Some guys you got to pat them on the back. Some guys you got to be funny, joke mm -hmm. with them. And so for me, and that's kind of how it was in the locker room, but I think the media kind of like, you know what? That guy's going to give us coaches spiel. Let's go ask Shannon. Mm -hmm. Shannon's going to tell us mm -hmm. what it is. Shit. Like. Right. And, and I, would. I, I would. I would be as honest as I possibly could. And, you know, a couple of times my coach is like, well, Shannon, you can't be. I'm like, well, yeah, if they watched the game, they would have saw that we sucked. Mm -hmm. So, did that um, ever cause problems in the locker room with your teammates? Just your so forthcoming and your honesty. It didn't really cause a problem, but they know I was on it. But I would tell the guy, "Bro, you tell you stealing." Right. So it's um, do this, yeah, doing yeah, the same you, you know. then. So you would tell them to their face, what yeah, you say, "Okay." Yeah. Oh, yeah. you had yourself accountable. You led yeah. by example, so it's easy to do that. It right. is. It is. And the guys saw how hard I worked. Right. Mm -hmm. But for me, when I played those fourteen years, nothing else mattered. Yeah. Football was the most important thing. Other than breathing, football was most important. Mm -hmm. Not family, not kids, not mm -hmm. brother, not mom, not sister. And I make no apologies mm. for Who what I was able to accomplish in my 14 Who years. Who you sound like? Mm. Who you sound like? Mm. Kobe. Yeah. Nah. I, and, and look, during my Hall of Fame speech, I, I told my kids, you know, because I would get the, the kids would come a couple of, for a couple of weeks during the summer. And I promised I'd take them to the amusement park and, all, you know, Six Flags. And I had every intention of doing that, mm -hmm. but after running for two hours on the track, mm -hmm. after lifting for another two hours, I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. And and I know at the time they didn't understand, all they know is that daddy had just told me another lie. He said mm -hmm. he was gonna take mm -hmm. us, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. But as they got older, hopefully they understood, this is how you go to college, mm -hmm. this right. is why you got the car that daddy was, all that, there are mm -hmm. sacrifices you have to make. And I tell people, the greater the player, the more selfish so, that he is. Mm -hmm. So if you think, these, oh, man, he ain't, no, no, no. Oh, he's a team guy. Okay, he might, yeah, he's a team guy. Mm -hmm. But there are things you have to miss. Mm -hmm. You have to miss some recitals. You have to miss mm -hmm. some flag football games. You got practice. You got meetings. You got to mm -hmm. work on your craft. And that requires you to be selfish. And a lot of people don't understand that. But I don't make any apologies for what I was able to accomplish because my whole focus, when my brother and I was growing up, we grew up in a 1,000 square foot cinder block home. Mm -hmm. Cement floors. The floors were just like what we have in this here. Mm -hmm. No paneling. And I could look up at night and I could look through the tin roof and I could see the stars. And my whole purpose was, my brother and I, was to get my grandmother out of that environment. That was the only thing that mattered to me. It wasn't about, you know, Shannon, if you make a lot of money, you'll be famous. I didn't care anything about fame. And I don't really, to this day, I don't care about money. Right. I love what money gives me access to. Right. That's, That's what I love about money. Not the money itself, the tangible product, that money. Right. I love what it allows me to do and what it was allowed, able to allow me to do for my family. Right. So because for my grandmother to go to bed for 66 years and have it rain and not get wet, that was my whole focus. Mm. That drove me. That drove my brother. And so all the things that we talked about, man, we got to get Granny out of here. We got to do this. All the times that I'm in college and, you know, uh, she was sending, have my sister to wrap it up, five bucks in newspaper and send it to me. In 1980, I left my grandmother's house in 86. Um, and I had two bags, two grocery bags, Piggly Wiggly bags mm. um, for my luggage. I didn't have a suitcase. Mm -hmm. I had two ba bags with all my belongings. And I was going to Savannah State. And in, and, uh, 1987, I was a sophomore, and I remember 
like because we had community phones. I didn't have a phone in my room. And I remember walking down the hall, it was all quiet. I said, you know what? I'm gonna call my grandmother. Nobody's here. So I get on the phone, call collect. Operator comes on the phone. Yes, I say, I'd like to place a collect call to Mary Porter from Shannon Sharp. Operator comes on. Uh, this is a collect call to Mary Porter from Shannon Sharp. Will you accept? My grandmother said no. She said, I can't pay the $50 phone mm -hmm. bill I got right now and hung the phone up. Mm -hmm. I remember walking down the hall and tears started to rail up in my eyes when my roommate's in the room, so I can't let him see me cry. And I'm just laying, I get, go lay on the bed and I'm looking up at the scene and I'm just staring. Now, mind you, my grandmother got on the at seven months old, my grandmother got on the train to come get me from Chicago. Two months old. Or three months, excuse me. My dad came and got me back at seven months. Grandma came and got me back at two. So Who's I lived. Mom? Was that his mom or? Uh, my mom. My, uh, my mom's mom. Okay. Yeah. So at, from, from the two years on, my grandmother was everything. I slept in the very bed with my grandmother until I was 15. I didn't get out of my grandmother's bed until my brother left and went to college. So I had slept with my grandmother, so I know it broke her heart to tell me no. Right. Because when my brother went to school, my, my sister's eight years older than me, my sister's dating, it's just me and her. It's just her and I and my, um, my nephew at the time, my sister's son. And so we play a game. All my other friends going out, I'm going home to take care of Granny. Mm -hmm. We play a basketball game, my friends going out on Saturday, Friday night, I'm going to take care of Granny. So I know what that did to her to, to tell no to me you. no. Yeah, right. yeah. I can't accept this call because I got a $50 phone bill I can't pay right Already. now. So I'm laying and I'm thinking. The only thing that I'm thinking, oh, I'm leaving. I'm Savannah State. Oh, I'm going to the NFL. Gotcha. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it. That, that was the only thing that mattered. And when I got to the league, the only thing that mattered was football. Mm -hmm. Not women. And it was like, look, can you be number two? Can you handle being number two? Everybody says they can handle being number two mm -hmm. until you actually you Have are number two. two right. It sounds good, man. You know, Shannon Sharp is interested in me and he's going to be, you know, we're going to date. Okay. But just so you know, practice, studying tape, working out, the way I eat. Oh, that's before you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And he couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. Okay. No harm, no foul. I'm not mad at you, mm -hmm. but please don't be mad at me for the right. way I am. Right. right. Up front right. and honest. That's greatness. Talk to us about your grandmother seemed like she was everything, and I saw a quote that kind of summarized that you learned everything good and bad from either your grandmother or your brother. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that. Man, my grandmother, man, look. My grandmother had nine kids, so she raised her nine and raised my mom's three. Mm. And I can assure you she loved my mom's three more than she loved her own kids. So I remember when my grandfather uh, uh, died in 1977, my mom wanted to take my brother. My sister, was, oh, my sister was 17, so my sister was able to make her own decision. She wanted to take my brother and I back. And my granny said, no. She said, I've raised them this far. Mm. I got it. Now, for me, I can remember it's funny how I'm playing this back in my mind. My grandfather died, I was eight years old. I can tell you everything he's ever said to me verbatim. My grandmother lived, four, I, I was 43 years old when my grandmother passed. I can tell you almost everything verbatim what she's ever mm. told me in my 43 years of existence. I can tell you every time she was happy, every time she was mad, everything. Mm. My grandfather used to tell my brother now, he says, boy, I don't care, he, and you know, oh, in the South they call you boy, they ain't never call you by your name. Yep. Say, boy, I don't care what you become, just never have to look at me and your grandma and say I'm sorry. So for me, I never wanted to have, I wonder where Shannon is. I wonder where Sterling is. That was our mindset. Never do anything to cause my grandmother pain because she was going through enough pain Yeah, living the, in the environment that she mm -hmm. lived in, raising us how she raised us. Um, and so for me, man, we spent a, 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 I spent a, many a night thinking because when, you, like, when, you, when you're in the environment that you're in, you like, is, I never thought, is anybody else living like this? I just thought it was natural that Normal. I drank Normal. well water. I thought that was natural. I thought it was natural that that I had to go outside to go to the bathroom until I was 20. Mm -hmm. I didn't know mm -hmm. that everybody else had a shower. Mm -hmm. Everybody else had indoor plumbing. I didn't I like, because everybody I knew, that was the same thing. I never spent the night at someone else's house until I was probably, until I was grown out on my own. 
I never had anybody come stay at my house mm -hmm. other than family. Never spent never spent the night. Cause they couldn't afford to take another person in the house. No, nah, well, the thing was that we didn't have we didn't have a bathroom. Mm -hmm. And so for me, you know, I ragged everybody just like I ragged yeah. people. Now, can you yeah. imagine if yeah. that would have got out that yeah. I didn't have indoor yeah. plumbing? That, I'd have I'd have never made it here because I'd have been fighting every day. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell that story. Yeah, Somebody yeah. got to die. Right. You yeah. can never let that mm. get out. That's the manhood. <laughs> You gonna tell us, man? Shadow Sharp ain't got no, no bathroom. bathroom. Oh man! Wow! Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, take that with you. And so to watch her and how she worked every single day, going to work from seven to three. She worked at the nursing home. My grandmother worked at the very nursing home. Uh, she's the last couple of years. She lived at the very nursing home that she provided a lot of the income that we had growing up. And one of the women, uh, uh, the ladies that she was taking care of, she ended up being a roommate. Wow! Man, my. She taught my brother and I, she taught us hard work, she taught us discipline. You know, we had a saying down south that says you work from can't to can't. When you left to go to work, mm -hmm. you can't see, because mm -hmm. the sun ain't up. And when you got home, Let's the see. sun was already was gone down, you can't see. Mm -hmm. But working those 12 hours a day, I mean, I got a, 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 a W-2 from 1977. Mm -hmm. I was working from the time I was like five or six years old, mm -hmm. working 12 hours a day. Damn. I remember working, we worked, <laughs> I made five bucks a day. Made two fifty for working half a day on 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 Saturday, for twelve hours. I'm six seven years old. I don't know very many six seven years old right now no, no. that their parents would even think about letting them go out there and work in the field and do manual labor. Nope. But from cropping tobacco, picking up pecans, clipping toma uh, uh, onions, tomatoes, I did it all. Bale hay, mm. and people look at me and like, so that's where this body came from. Mm. But it hardened me. I tell people all the time, the easiest job I ever had was playing professional football. Yeah, yeah. They go, hold on. First of all, you're going to give me a scholarship to go play a sport? <laughs> right. And then you tell me I can make millions of dollars? Try working on the field for $5 a day. And then tell me if you like that. Mm -hmm. So she taught us hard work. I mean, my grandmother loved to fish. Um, one of the worst whippings I got in my life is that we were going fishing. All my um, cousins were coming over. They, they were over. And so me, I went went to ditch, found this great spot. So I was digging baits. Baits, we call them night crawlers, jump, whatever you want to call them. Worm, but anyway, worms. Yeah, they call y'all call them worms. We got, we got a specific mm -hmm. name from them. We got uh, jumping jacks. That's jumping what they were called. Jacks, we, yeah. Jumping yeah. jacks. Yeah. And, uh, he looked like a jumping jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, uh, a jumping night jack. Night crawlers. So I'm one of the worst whippings I got in my life. So I, ooh, I um, milk jug, I had cut the top of it off. And um, hand me Man, I, it was loaded. My grandmother got home from work, and my grandfather loaded us up in the truck, all me, my brother, my cousins, and we go fishing. We go and fishing. And she said, Shannon, let me get them baits. You left them. Not my bait. Hold on. I'm the only one that really, uh, they were bull jabbing. I said, no. I told my grandma, no. How old? I couldn't have been no more than about seven. Okay. <laughs> Early on. Not your bait. <laughs> Not your bait. Look. My gra my grandfather really my grandfather was disciplined, but if you really wanted to tear your butt up, let my grandma say, Barney, them boys. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Man, stacks. I said no, <coughs> and my grandma said, Barney, that boy say he ain't gonna give me them baits. Lord have mercy. Was it what, what, what was it? The belt, extension card. Man, the, my, you know whip. back then, they hand. beat you. They hit you with whatever Any they got in your hand. Get the switch on Man, the my, my, my grandfather was heavy hand. My grandfather Ooh. wasn't that tall. Yeah, heavy. But hand. he was like my grandfather was probably like five, maybe five eight, five nine. But he probably like two fifty five, two sixty, solid yeah. wide back. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I needed a cell phone back then, so I could have called them folks on Papa. It was it was different. <laughs> Man, it, it was, was different. It was, it was very different. It was different. But after that, after that point, that was time, love. That was that was that, that, you know, tough love. They didn't. You know, people like maybe you could look at it like that, but I didn't. I don't ever think I got a whipping. That I didn't deserve. Right, right. They wouldn't I just earned, I no earned some of the stuff I yeah. got. Yeah. Right. Now a lot of stuff I blamed on my brother, you know, and he would get whipping because he was the oldest. Yeah. So he's supposed to know better. He's supposed to keep me from doing it. And I like, okay, you know, if I break this glass, you know, you know who they're gonna blame. <laughs> <laughs> What's the age difference between y'all two? Three years. Okay. He's three years older than I am. Okay. And then my brother, we got a very unique relationship because it's really not like brother brother. He's more like my father. Mm. And so I, he, I really never looked at him. Like my brother, still He's to this day. To this day, interesting. Still, to, still to this day, is that we don't have like a typical brother brother relationship. It's more like 
father son. Mm-hmm. And so anything, any decision that I've ever that's needed deep. to make, that's dope. I've always talked to him. Um, he was in school. He would come back and see. Because the decision at first, um, I was Prop 48. The first year Prop 48 hit, 1986. Um, and so I was going to go to the military. I was going down the next day to go take the test for the Air Force. Air Force. I was going to the military. Really? My brother left school at University of South Carolina, and he came home. He said, uh, does Savannah State still have that scholarship? I said, yeah, Coach Davis told me. Um, he said, if I ever, you know, ever want to come to Savannah State, he says, go. He says, uh, go to Savannah State for one year, and if you don't like it, um, you could always say, hey, I went and college wasn't for me. He says, now, nah, I'm not asking you to go. I'm telling you to go. Mm-hmm. So that was really the first time that my brother at, that, at this juncture, I'm, I'm 17 years of age, uh, uh, he's 20. That was really the first time that he had raised his voice at me since we got, like, you know. Grown uh, yeah. somewhat. And uh, so I could tell, but it was, it was hurting him because he knew how much talent I had. And he's like, he about to go squander this talent, go into the military. Um, and somebody's going to miss out on a great opportunity. And it was a great. And so every decision that I've made since then is that I've always run it by him mm-hmm. to, this, to this day. You know I'm serious about you. Uh, it's not if you meet my mom. She meet your brother. You need to meet my brother. That's mm-hmm. what's up. You need to meet my sister. Mm-hmm. Now, my sister and I are, might be closer than my brother and I. I talk to my sister every day. I've talked to my sister every day on the phone since 1990. Every day. If I don't call her, if I don't call, if I don't call by three o'clock, she'll call me. Okay, is everything okay? I just hadn't heard from you all day. I was just, you know, right. making sure everything's okay. Little sister, big sister. I'm the youngest. Okay. She's the oldest. She'll be. She uh, she's eight years older than me. Okay. Five years older than my brother. My brother's three years older than me. That's okay. how siblings supposed to be, man. So we're close. We're 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 very very close. Um, we, it wasn't always like that because you know I, I was annoying. My sister's age. She, you know she mm-hmm. wanted to date. And I want to know everything and see what's going on. Cause I would tell that was that was my that was my leverage. That You're was my bargaining chip. Cause see, my grandfather knew I would tell. Mm-hmm. So he always <laughs> wanted to push me to go along with him. Cause just, I was gonna tell. Case. Yeah, yeah. I would tell if they did something they weren't supposed to be doing. So my aunts learned early on we could bribe Shannon. Keep you in we the middle. We take him to Dairy Queen, get him a milkshake, <laughs> get him a yeah. 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 My sister didn't learn that. So when she wouldn't give me what I want, I would tell I tell my grandmother. Libby came and checked us out of school today. We was in Statesboro. So she got... <laughs> Fucked the whole day up. <laughs> so I, I would tell. I would, I would listen to the door. I hear my aunts, because at the time, it was like 10 of us in a 1,000 square foot. So it had, you know, four, my four aunts, my sister, my brother, now my, grand, my, my brother, myself, my grandparents. So I'd be to the door. They'd be listening, be talking about boys. Mm-hmm. Oh, somebody's going to try to sneak out. Okay. Yeah. So I go... I got the intel. Off. <laughs> you put your hand down first. Yeah, yeah, I got some yeah, shit yeah, for hey, you. Look here. Now, let me tell you, uh, if <laughs> y'all don't like us, now you talk about real matter of fact. My grandfather ain't bull Yeah, he wasn't all about that. Um, I was about five, and uh, we're on the front porch. My grandfather, because the front porch was like right here, and my grandfather's bed at the bedroom was right there, and um, his brother thumped me. Now my grand, there, there are certain things you don't about, know about that. Yeah, or, there are certain mm. things my grandfather didn't like. My grandfather didn't like for you to thump somebody on the head. It said you make them thick headed and they wouldn't learn. So he kept. <laughs> it, yeah, that's my grand. They believe that. You know, old people believe that. They had all kinds of stuff in the south. So he thumped me again, and I kept. Oh, stop! I said, stop, Uncle, uh, Uncle Oliver. He thumped me again. I heard my grandfather get up out the bed. Mm-mm. My grandfather came out there and looked him dead in his eye. He said, if you thump that boy one more time, I'll blow your brains out. My, grandpa, my uncle got in the car and never came back. When my grandfather died, he wouldn't even go into church. Wow. My grandfather, as a matter of fact, he didn't play. He, he, he didn't all that joking and kiki ki Yeah, it wasn't him. He wasn't about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's where, like, you know where you stand with me. Mm-hmm. Ain't no, I wonder, I wonder if Shannon liked me. I wonder right. if Shannon cool. You know. Mm-hmm. You, you know. For the most part, if you don't know, I, I, I'll tell you. I don't fool with you. Mm-hmm. Like, when I first met Stax, we and him talking, not so much on camera, off camera. I said, I, I can rock with him. Mm-hmm. I said, because he real like me. I ain't all about that kiki kid, all about that sh- for the camera to be mm-hmm. in your... 
bro, if I don't mess with you, I don't mess with you. Silence. I'm going to put on a great show for the camera, but once the camera click, <laughs> on his phone, yeah. I'm on my phone. Right. If I rock with you, I'm gonna carry on the conversation. Yeah. I'm gonna be engaging. Yeah. But if I don't, I don't. He ain't lying. So that's that's kind of how we grew. That's kind of how we grew up. Is that just be honest with someone? Um, and then my grandmother, like I said, raised to do what she did to take raise her nine, and then take my mom's three, hmm. and to get us out. And because the greatest compliment that my grandma, it wasn't that she had two boys, two grand boys that played in the NFL. The greatest compliment my grandmother got, received, is that, Mary, you did an unbelievable job with those boys. Mm -hmm. That was her greatest, that was her crowning achievement. Not getting to the NFL, mm -hmm. but the way, how mannerable we were. Grace yes, sir, men. no, sir. Yes, yeah. ma'am, no, ma'am. Right. Sure, Mary, I saw them boys, and it's still, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Here we, you know, and my, it, it, it's funny, is that when, when people, when old people get things in their head, they can't let it go. My brother and I, we're in the NFL, and we're at the height. We're making millions. We would give my grandmother money, and she would still have my sister go buy stuff on credit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, granted, why? But that's how she was conditioned. Mm -hmm. She never had enough money to go pay for everything in full. Up front, yeah. So she got used to even that. Mm -hmm. Granted, you got $1,000, and you put $50 on credit. Why? But that's what she knew. That's all she knew. Mm -hmm. And so for me to go home... And I'd be led, you know, I was like, I was like, I would always tell her, cause after I got old enough, I would get a hotel room. She's like, cause I stayed in my grandma, even I was in the NFL. I had kids, I had a Ferrari, I had a Mercedes, I had everything. Part, and I, I was remember laying there, I was, I was laying in the bed one night, I was just laying there. I'm like, man, I got kids, I got a Ferrari, I got a Mercedes. And I'm staying in a room in my grandma's house. Mm -hmm. That don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. Let me get my ass up out of here yeah. and go get me a house. I called my agent and said, man, look here. I'm moving to Atlanta. I said, uh, you need to have a, a real estate agent to meet me up there uh, 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 so I can find me a place. But just to go home, I mean, I would, I remember I would come home and she'd be laying in the room. I wouldn't tell, I'd tell Libby, don't tell Granny I'm coming home. Because if something came up, she would get really worried if I wasn't able to make it. I said, don't tell Granny I'm coming. And I come in, oh, man, she would get, it, it was just such a great, it was, it was it was it was a wonderful relationship because I would just go back and I lay in a room and lay in the bed with her and like get your big old self out of my bed. You gonna break my bed down? Mm -hmm. And I pretend like I yeah I'm gonna break it down. Tell me you gonna buy me a new one. But we just had a, a, a unbelievable relationship. And I tell people this: when she died, a part of me died too. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm I was yeah, I'm never the, I was never the same after that. You know it's, it's funny you say that because uh, I I was grandma's baby too and I didn't know we had so much in common. So my grandmother had nine kids and she took my mama three, me and my two sisters, and raised us the same way. And my only goal and the only two people and the only two houses I've ever built was for one for my grandmother and one for my mama. So I know the feeling. Nothing I know like the feeling. It. It's, there, there's nothing like and people like. Do you feel? You know, a lot. I've, I've gotten asked, "Do you feel your mom, you know, neglected you?" And she I said, the, "The best thing she ever did." Let's go. You got to make a decision. You living on the south side of Chicago with two boys. Do you think they have a better chance being with your grandparents in rural South Georgia, or with you having to work every day and they're gonna have to be home alone? What do you think? Mm -hmm. You got to make a decision. Some sometimes the best decision does not involve you. Mm -hmm. And it takes a real it takes a real person to Absolutely. understand that. My the that was the best the best decision that my mom possibly could have made was to send us to rural South Georgia. Mm -hmm. She knew we was gonna get, you know, we we're gonna be eating no steak or anything like that. Yeah. We we're gonna be eating a lot of, you know, a lot of possum and a lot of raccoon, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Coon uh, soup. Oh yeah. <laughs> now you have to bake that thing, have to get you know some uh, uh, you, you know, gotta get you some aluminum thing. foil, get you a, a baker, you know, and cut him up, get you some bell pepper, some onions. You know, you make that thing nice and right. <laughs> <laughs> Put him in the oven by by the hour and a half, two hours, by yeah. three fifty. Tender. Yeah. What? Tastes, tastes like what? Chicken? My sister make it fall off the bone right now. Tastes like she what? Probably, <laughs> she got one right in the oven. She got one in the freezer right, right now. now. <laughs> What's it taste like? It's gamey. It, it's yeah. It's, yeah. it's like a. a it got red, a wild taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gamey. Yeah, it got a wild but, taste. But you grow up and you don't. You know, you eat that. You eat uh, uh, turtle and you mm -hmm. eat turtle legs. I mean. Yep. Frog legs. Yeah, roll kill. Mm -hmm. Man, if we hit a raccoon or a squirrel or a rabbit or something, oh, he going home. <laughs> oh, you think you going to die in the ditch? Nah, bro, you going home. You going to the pot. Go clean him up. <laughs> yeah. Man, hey, my grandma, my grandma said, hey, boy, y'all need to go out there and get a mess of squirrels. You know, that's what they talk. It wasn't a mess. 
oh, we caught a mess of fish today. Oh, go, uh, boy, you know, y'all need to go out there. My brother, go get that, uh, get that gun. And you know, if you're from the south, you handle guns. It was never yeah, thing. It was nothing. You know, it, it never dawned on me that you weren't supposed to leave a loaded gun around until mm -hmm. I got grown and uh, you know that was a no no. Every gun in my grandfather's house was loaded. Mm -hmm. It never, do man. Do you imagine if you'd have grabbed that gun? I wish you uh, would. What? <laughs> <laughs> I wish you it, would. It never dawned on me that guns weren't supposed to be loaded around kids. All the guns were loaded, mm -hmm. and we knew where every last one of them was. But it never dawned on us to go touch it. Mm -hmm. It never dawned on Unless us. Unless you want to so die. When my grandfather passed away, my brother would go hunting. And shoot raccoons, shoot squirrels. Man, that was some of the best. See, my grandma fired them things up, some mother fry them. Man, that was some good old man. That was some good, good old, old eating back then. Hey, speaking of speaking of your brother though, I know I know how much he mean to you. Like, what did what did you feel any pressure? Like your brother was one of the best to ever do it. Uh did you feel any pressure in his shoes? I welcomed it. You welcomed Love every, it. Every, everybody, everybody can't handle that now. Man. Right. Now I have a son. He wanted no parts of that. Yeah. He didn't want the comparison because he tried to play football and your dad would have caught that. Yeah. Or you're not a fan. You know what I'm saying? Everything. He, he, don't, he don't want that. Everything. I wanted it. Yeah. Right. See, I, I didn't live in my brother's shadow. I embraced it because I thought... Like you said, he was like a father figure. Yes. Yeah. It never dawned on me because he was three years older than him. That I could not run him, mm -hmm. or I couldn't, I couldn't beat him in basketball one on one. He was the target. Yeah, yeah, that was it. But I also knew, okay, I'm playing against somebody much older than me. The kids my age and uh, a couple of years older, they stood no chance. They stood no chance of beating me at anything. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I like I tell people, I didn't live in my brother's shadow. I embraced it. Mm -hmm. And so everything, he was the target because okay, you did that. Okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do more. You did this, I'm gonna do better. And that was the whole thing. Even when I got to the NFL, now, he was a much better player. Football, and I tell and people don't believe this, football was my worst sport in high school. I was a much better in basketball and track than football, but I only played football because my brother played. So, and I wanted to be like him. Stack, I had that stack. I would like that stack. Oh, here we go. I, told, I would like that I, stack. I, I told you it was I would coming. Like that See, stack. I was the other way. I was better at football than basketball, and See? I chose basketball for long Shannon said he was nice and who? Ooh, Nice. Duncan, no. What was your game? Compare your game. To, compare your high school game to someone in the NBA right now. Um, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> you see how big you <laughs> <laughs> I was going James. I was going James before he was going James. <laughs> Man, y'all was right eye at me. Yeah. Man, look. Here. I was a. Uh, you know, look. I, I'm from a class A school, a small school. Um, and so, it's like, you didn't have positions back then. Yeah. Just hooped. You, what, you, whatever. Yeah. Hooped. I could jump the highest, so I jumped center. Yeah, yeah. I was, you know, six foot tall, six one. Hmm. But hey, country, country, country strong. Yeah. I was all, I was always, always. Mm -hmm. yeah. Still. Uh, <laughs> God damn it! I'm fucking still. <laughs> still I was always, I've, all, I've always, I've always had had this body. Now yeah. I, I filled it out, but I've always was lean and was chiseled. And man, so yeah, I get, I get that, get them bored. Hey, thirty one nineteen was nothing. 27, 27 game stack was Ooh. nothing. We need to see the archive footage of that. was nothing. Hey, tell, tell I tell you, put it like this here. Tell me about your dunk contest dunk that you told me you Before did. Before I tell you this, you know who beat me out? Was it my senior year? Michael Jordan? No. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no. My, I think it was my senior year. Might have been my junior year. For beat me out for player of the area player of the year, you never guess who beat me out. Who beat you out? Purvis Ellison. Wow. Okay. Yeah, he lugged up and got me. <laughs> he got you? He lugged up and got me. <laughs> he lugged up and yeah. got you. Purvis. Purvis nice. Yeah. yeah. Purvis yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. But we was on the team together. Yeah. Yeah. Who was the lead scorer? No, he was, I wasn't on his team. We oh. were, he, went to, he went to a bigger high oh, school. All, but yeah. the mere fact that I went to a class A and he went to Quality, which was the biggest classification at the time, and we on the same team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah stack. I keep telling you, stack. Okay. Okay. Been, hey, okay. I'd have been more like Oak. With a better all-around game to Oak. See, Oak, Oak, Oak just bruised people up. He wasn't getting yeah. it. See, I'm going to let that thing fly. <laughs> I averaged 30 my senior year before the three-point. There was no three-pointer back then. 30? I got 30. Yeah. Just don't get a bucket. That's, oh, okay. Drop 52 and three quarters. Like a nothing. He think he Clay Thompson. Before, that was before the three. They, they didn't have no three when I played those stacks. That's what I'm hey. saying. I got 30 the hard way. You Can you imagine? You had to go earn it. Yeah. Okay. But then you know, I was like, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to be big, big, you know. Yeah, so you I can't started be like that basketball. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. And my brother used to tell me all the time when I got to college, I started lifting. 
started getting three good meals. You know, they feed you good at college. Mm, what? So I started lifting. Running track. And I know once I got to college, all I did football. Just football. All, I, all I did was football and do my schoolwork. Because, see, when I got to Savannah State, I was Prop 48. So I was in all remedial classes. Mm -hmm. All remedial classes. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of other guys that were at Savannah State that liked, especially football players, but they didn't want to go to class because they were embarrassed. Shit, me. Put, put me that, that, that. I said, I ain't embarrassed because guess what? Some of the finest girls at school was right yeah, up in the remedial classes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, yep. just, but I had, I had uh, Dr. Joy, uh, uh, McLemore. She was my reading teacher. I was reading in class one day. Next day I read. She gave us an assignment. I turned it in first, turned it in. She came to me, and she always called me. To this day, she called me Mr. Sharp. She said, Mr. Sharp, I don't want to see you here next quarter. She said, you got no business in this class. Mm -hmm. She said, you way too smart to be in this class. Mm -hmm. Man, I got up out of them things. I got up out of all the remedial classes, because I was in all of them. Got all out of all of them in two quarters and started and graduated in four and a half years. That's dope. Congratulations on I that. I say, man, look that's here. I'm getting up out right. of there. Yeah, I was sitting in the front of the class yeah. answering all the questions. I was doing my girlfriend homework while y'all bumping them. Yeah. <laughs> After my girl did them. No, yeah. no, I did her work. Yeah. That's yeah. What's up. Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> Real quick, though, before we leave uh, the situation with your brother, what was your thoughts seeing him, his trajectory, to me, I'm a football head, so he was on the way to the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. There's no question. So to sustain a career-ending neck injury, what was the thoughts on that scene? That's your big bro, your hero, your dad in, in, in some sorts. Man, that broke me, man. <clears throat> I, I remember getting the call, and I was talking to him. He said, yeah, because I saw it the week before they played the Falcons. And he had, you know, he had a little, he had a little injury, and he seemed like he was like, struggling to get up. But he ends up getting up and walks off the field. He didn't come back in the game, <clears throat> but I figured everything was going to be okay. He had a stinger. And then the next week, he played He played in Tampa. He had seven for like a buck 30, buck 40, he two was touchdowns. A killer. Yeah. And so I remember saying, you know, and he barely, he barely, I mean, the guy grazed him with his forearm across the front of his helmet. And he said he couldn't get over. He said he was trying to get up, but he couldn't. Mm -hmm. He said he tried to roll himself over, and he couldn't. And I'm like, that little hit, he said, but they sent me to the doctor for some tests. Man, he called me. That was, I was talking to him that Sunday night. He called me that Tuesday night. He said, man, I'm never playing again. I said, what? He said, no. Nah. He said, the doctor told me, he said, I got very lucky. He said, uh, another hit, I could probably be paralyzed. Man, I cried. Man, you thought somebody died because everything that he was, I wanted to be. What did he get? Seven, eight years in? Seven. He got seven years seven in. Years. Seven years. Uh, two 100 catch seasons when that was unheard yeah, of. Yeah, that was. He was three-time first team All Pro, led the league in receiving, had the triple crown. Oh, he was a monster. And I loved Sterling. Man, that man, that hurt me. Man, that hurt me so bad. That's still because I always think, what if? Right. Would have been one of the greatest. There's no what, question what about it. Because he, he, uh, he, and, he and Jerry were, were right there. Neck and neck. They, they, were, they were neck and neck. Mm -hmm. And it just, it was tough. It was tough. I still think about what. And, and I still, to this day, I would, I would gra gladly give it up my career. Mm -hmm. Say, nah, nah, hey, God, hey, give him a healthy neck. Mm -hmm. Let me take this. Mm. That, man, it just. Because every, cause every, everything that I was able to accomplish, there's no way without I'm him. accomplishing this without mm -hmm, him. Absolutely. Everything, the way, the, the, the way he pushed me, he could, I could hear his voice. We play in a, in a basketball game, the gym crowded. I could hear his voice. Do it like this. Hey, Doc, stop playing with him. Take it. I could just hear his voice. We, track, we go to the state track meet, and I could just hear him say, okay, well, this is what we need to do. He says, get your warm up, get good and warm. Because I didn't jump a whole lot. I jumped one time. Me was old for me. <laughs> I was like, one time. <laughs> See, I go and put it out there like 48 feet, and, and I'm done. Yeah, yeah I, I, I got to save my leg. I got to run later. So I ain't got to put all them jumps on my legs. Mm -hmm. So it was just, man, that hurt, man. I still, because like I said, knowing how hard he worked. See, the difference was I wasn't always the hard worker that I became that. I was just naturally, God gave me more God-given ability than mm -hmm, him. Mm -hmm. So you show me something, okay, anything. 
Okay, I'm good. I, I got it. You gonna figure it out? I, 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 but he was working hard. He did. He worked hard in school. He did did well in school. Man, I'm like later for school. Mm-hmm. I'm here to play sports in school. I, I thought, you know, I thought football, basketball, and track. Okay, then school. He was the opposite. Mm-hmm. He did good on his SATs. He got A's and B's. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, hey, they pass people with C's and D's too. So yeah, like, hey, that means I ain't got to take no home. I took I took one book home in four years of high school. And that was because the teacher told me she was, he was going to check my locker, and if the book was in there, he was going to fail me for the class. I didn't, do, I didn't read it. It's I just took it home. That was an evidence. Yeah. But, oh, but man, shit. man, but for when when that happened, like I said, it, it was like, that's still probably one of the, that's still one of the two or three saddest days of my career when he told me, say, it's over for me, bro. Tough. So it's, like it's, he told me, it's on, it's on you now. And so we get to the Super Bowl in 97, and we're doing an interview with NBC, and we're sitting down talking. I was like, yeah, I'm going to give him the Super Bowl ring. And he looks at me. He's like. Oh, he had no idea. He had no, no, right. he had no idea that right. I was going to do that when we win the game. And he's th- I'm sure he's thinking, that's the most prized possession. That's what you play for. That's why you lift all those weights and all the dedication and all the recitals and all the things that you miss. You miss for that moment. For that moment. Because that's the, the, the culmination, that's the crescendo of your particular sport. Mm-hmm. Super Bowl and, and, and football, and you sport, you know, it's the NBA Finals, mm-hmm. you win that ring. But for me, that's not possible without him. And so the only way I can say, bro, thank you for everything that you've done. Right. Thank you for being in my that's corner. Tremendous. Thank you for do everything, for being the man, because when Papa died, there was no dominant male figure in the house, and you took that role, mm-hmm. and you made sure your baby brother had everything. Thank you. That was like mm. for me, the journey was what I what I because I got to live that. I got the bus ride, I got the plane rides and going to the stadium and being in the arena. That's what it was for me. That's what it's always been. That's why I don't wear that's why I don't wear the ring. For me, the the the, 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 the ring, it symbolizes something different for everybody, but for me, I wanted him to have that ring because it would mean more to him than it ever would for me. So to give him that ring and see the joy on his face that he got that, because I believe there's no question in my mind he would have gotten it had he continued to play. But, man, I wouldn't. But all that, I, 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 I think it took all that for the way how we were brought up and my brother going through that to get me here, to get to me to where I got to, to year. where I am today. Yeah, the best you would got two more chips after that. Mm-hmm. I did, you know I mean? did, and, and and all the, you know people. Which one's the more special? Look, they're all special for different reasons. Everybody, you got. I don't care if you got ten kids, you got a favorite. Yeah, you got a favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, they ain't supposed to know that, but right. they know. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't supposed <laughs> to know that. <laughs> they don't know. Uh, okay, which one? I ain't saying, but I got a favorite. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my my grandmother like, yeah. Sometimes I just I just find myself thinking, man, what could have been? Man. How how good how could good could you have been? Thousand catches was a foregone conclusion because he had five sixty five in seven years. He was twenty nine. Mm-hmm. He was forced to retire twenty nine. Mm-hmm. Caught eighteen touchdowns his last year, mm-hmm. over a thousand mm-hmm. yards, ninety four catches, and never played another down. Mm-hmm. But both of y'all still ended up. Hall of Famer. Well, we're, we're trying to get him in because he gonna, man, uh, he's a Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. Ain't no trying. He's a Hall of Famer. Man, man. it's but it's great. And then you know he watches like, okay, bro, I watched the show today, man. You you put in that work. He said, I can tell you did your homework. That's what's yeah. Up. That 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 the proud. That's that's the pop stamping. That, that's him, man. Right. I mean, like I right. said, that's the type of relationship. Like I said, it, we've never had a brother. Now, we fought when I was like early on. We fought. I, I ain't look at him like that. Fought <laughs> right. Yeah. Of I'll fight the brakes off. Who you. didn't fight their brother? You, you got to. Yeah. Yeah, you got to. You, you make me mad. I'm, I'm picking up whatever I can find. Mama ain't you. home, so it's me and you. I'm telling. And, and sister you, ain't getting in the middle yeah, of if it. You, if you do beat me too bad, I'm telling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm telling. I'm, it always come back to that up. Oh, yeah. I, I would tell them. I mean, I'm telling. I would tell. I, uh, uh, I remember we were, uh, we were playing, playing with matches, and I ended up setting a field on fire. Oh, shit. So he tell me to go home and tell Papa somebody set the field on fire. I run home. Now, mind you, it's dry. Woo, it's easy. gone. The fire's gone. Yeah. But I'm running fast. I run through. The, I'm coming through. Coming. Th- Papa, somebody, somebody set the field on fire. He said, "Ain't t- ain't nobody been down there but you two fellas." Because <laughs> somebody. Yeah, he said, "One of you." Yeah, one he said, "Ain't nobody been down there but you two fellas." Spanky did it. Oh. 
<laughs> threw him under the I bus. Mean, I told him, he's like, man, I was like, what you wanted me to do? You wanted me to tell him I, I did, did it? Even though I did do it? You, <laughs> like, you want me to say that, though? <laughs> I couldn't do that. So, but, that, but that, that, that was, I mean, man, our relationship, man, it's just like, and I think the thing is that when he left, I was, I was going to be a sophomore in high school. That was the first time that he was going to be away and he wasn't going to be around. Mm. So who's going to watch over my little brother? Mm. Who's going who's gonna to watch him now? Because I'm not around. But by that, that time, you know, hey. You I'm, figured it out. I, yeah, I, 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 I've earned my stripes. I, you, for me, and people are like, man, you should. I said, look, bro, I said, I've never, ever started a fight. I don't go for bad. I don't bother anybody. I don't bother nobody. I said, I don't even know if I'm tough. I said, but don't make me find out how mm-hmm. tough I am. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I said that that's all that's all I'm saying. I said I, I don't bother nobody. I don't get that, you know, we talk barbershop but all that. But everybody gonna keep their hands to themselves mm-hmm. and we're gonna disagree, we're gonna agree to disagree. But ain't gonna be no pushing, ain't gonna be no none shoving, ain't gonna be mm-hmm. none of that. Mm-hmm. Like, y'all, but y'all different. I watch y'all how you, some of them guys like Stax and I was talking about this today, Matt, when uh uh, uh Trey Young put the ball through Trevor Reese's legs. Yeah. And Trey and Trip we shoved did, it. We would have did the same thing. But I'm saying, what, 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 what if he did? What if you put the ball through the leg and he put you put you in his chest like that? It was a fight. Yes, <laughs> off top, off top, <laughs> off top. Yeah, that the people like, what you you? Oh no, I, said, I don't care. I say, oh yeah, no, I don't care. It nah, a fight. It's a fight. Yeah. The one thing, let me tell you what I value. I value this over trust, loyalty, is respect. Mm-hmm. Can't buy that. <clears throat> because if I respect you, I can trust you, mm-hmm. and you'll be loyal to me. Mm-hmm. But see, if you don't respect me, you're going to feel you can do anything, anything you want to do Anytime, anytime, any place. No yeah. way. No, sir. Yeah, that's never, that's I got never kids. Going I, I got kids. Right, right. I got to yeah. talk to my kids. I was supposed to talk to my that's kids like that. That's, that's out there for perpetuity. Mm-hmm. Now, he's going to have a kid, and they're going to say, Daddy, you didn't do that man for Trey you like that. Yeah. And I was trying to explain. I was like, look. Trey, what, six foot tall now? He's been small basically his whole life. Whole life. So he's tried to he's had to find a way to navigate and get the ball to the basket. So he did that. You're gonna shiver him. I'm like, look, if you play a sport, you're gonna get embarrassed. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I don't care if you're the best offensive lineman, somebody gonna run a move on you and get the quarterback. Mm-hmm. If you've been a wide receiver, trust me, I done got cracked up under the chin and was sprawled out. Mm-hmm. If you play hoops, you done got dunked on, crossed you done got over. crossed over, yeah. you done had something happen. Trip yeah. over the three point line and fall in the stands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 I, but I got, I'm like, ain't nobody, I say, Trey, see, from that, that, I get both. I get both His sides of that though. To run out there. I get, but I get both sides. I'm not mad at Trey for trying it. I'm not mad at Trey for doing that. Cause just some people, I'm not. I'm not fucking having that. You yeah. know what I mean? And I'm not mad at him. Like you said, being little, being crafty. I love the fact yeah. that he pushed the limits and could do stuff like that. So it's, it's whatever. But like I said, it, it's different if it, if, if it happens <laughs> to some people. So that's a fight off top. Uh, off top. Ain't, ain't, no, ain't no question. No question Cause soon as he did that, the ball right outside the apartment. Yeah, right outside right, right, right at him. Somebody else better come on in. <laughs> so seventh round pick out of Savannah. Yep. To a Hall of Fame three-time Super Bowl champ. Talk to me about Elway, McCaffrey, Terrell Davis. Talk to me about those Super Bowl winning Bronco teams. Rod Smith. I remember yeah. going to, when I got drafted going to the Broncos. I remember I was like, man, I was thinking to myself, I said, man, John Elway, my quarterback. First thing my sister said, Shannon, don't go out there bull driving with no John Elway. You don't know that man like that. What I do? Talk go bull driving with John. <laughs> That's just you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and for some reason, guys, he took a liking to me. That's big. Maybe, maybe because, you know, I joked and I kept the locker room. I mean, I'm a seventh round draft pick. They gave me the number one. So basically, I'm just a camp body. Yeah. That's what that's that's what I'm supposed to be. And I just remember my brother saying, look, just know what you're supposed to do when you get your opportunity. He said, now John Elway gonna be looking for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, because he knows Big Bro. Yeah. yeah. He was like, John Elway gonna be looking for you. Just be ready. So I'm trying to cram, and so they, they got me learning. I'm supposed to learn Z. I'm supposed to learn the slot. I got to learn all these positions, and I'm struggling. And I remember asking a guy, I said, man, what I got on this play right here? He said, run this. I run it. Wrong route. It's the wrong route. Mm-hmm. Dirty. That's, now, that's the setup. Survival of the fittest. Training yes. Camp. Yes. He and I fighting for the same job. I knew it. I knew it. Mm-hmm. So if I could, he could get me out the way, right. but I swore to myself, I said, I would never, ever do that to somebody. Mm-hmm. I say, if I'm secure in who I am and what I am, mm-hmm. I don't need got to. to belittle you for me to shine. Mm-mm. And so I've always went out of my way. But when I got to Denver, 
I was seventh round draft pick. I was a tight end. And it just so happens every tight end on the roster got hurt. Now I'm the biggest receiver. So I go in, I'm like 221. So by the time they move me to the tight end halfway through the season, I'm 205. Mm. So I'm playing tight end at 205. Mm. Man, they ragged all of me. Mm-hmm. They throwing me all around in practice. And so I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I remember all this, how they throwing me around. So guess what happens after the run blocking drill? Pass catching drills. Mm-hmm. Oh, now let's see who wants to go. Because everybody, didn't, nobody wanted to go against Clarence K. or Orson Mobley because they were great run blockers. So now I'm looking. I see all you guys that was counting didn't want to go against C.K. and Orson. Y'all need to see me at the line. Mm-hmm. Kill it. Wade Phillips, who's the defensive coordinator. So they started practicing me. So what I would be, I would be the tight end from the opposing team. Mm-hmm. So scout team, scout I'm a scout team. team. Mm-hmm. So I'm that tight end. I'm cooking. Frying. I'm, that's game throw, day for you. I throw the ball. Yep, yeah, that's, that's it. That's game day for you. I throw the ball up in the woods. I'm putting the football all up. <laughs> Wade, <laughs> the fool. <laughs> I mean, I am. I'm spiking the ball. I'm doing everything. <laughs> Wade Phillips blows the whistle. He say, Dan, put his ass in the game and let's see if they can cover him. Mm. Because we can't. Damn. They that's put me in the game, and as they say, the rest so is So how history. far along was that? Where, where in your career? This was, first, this was rookie my, year. This was my, this was my rookie year. Mm, okay. This was my rookie Who year. said that? Wade Phillips? Wade mm-hmm. Phillips. He's Wade a Phillips decoy. Got, Wade, Phillips come, Wade Phillips, come on on the first team all common sense, because I <laughs> yeah. see you got the common sense. <laughs> yeah. and, and, that's, and, and, that, and, that's what he, and that's what happened. That's kind of how my career started off. And then I just started building this, this relationship with John. Every tough, you know, every tough catch – that needed to be made, security. I would make it yeah, in practice. Like it. Because you he, he you can't get that trust in the in game, game no. if he doesn't trust you in practice. So, and then I started sitting next to him during the meeting. I said, okay, well, okay, how you want me to how you want me to run this route? I said, it's saying go, you know, 12 to 14. He says, and he would tell me, he's like, okay, let's try 12, knowing that come game time, mm-hmm. you're gonna be at 10. So don't shorten it in practice, because if you shorten it that much in practice, you go, it's gonna be, I'm not gonna be ready to throw. Mm-hmm. And so that was the hardest thing, is that learning how to control the speed at tight end because they move me from wide receiver. So I'm faster than all the tight ends. And so I was wondering, I'm winning in practice, but he's not throwing me the ball. And he says, Timing. It doesn't do you any good to win if I'm not ready to throw you the ball. Because now by the time I'm ready to throw you the ball, the guy you mm-hmm. you covered again. Yeah. So now you have to understand. So he's talking to me. He's talking through it. So. What he's seeing, what he wants me to do, how he wants me to run certain routes. And so I don't know if I can go to any other court because he was very patient with me. So they put me in the game. They move they move me to a tight end. So they put me in the game. I don't know nothing. So I'm, I'm struggling trying to learn wide receiver plays. So they put me in, in the game. They put me in motion the entire game in Denver. As I run by Elway, he would turn around and tell me what I got. So I go by in motion. He tell me, run an out route. Mm. Go back to the huddle. So he called a play. I put me in motion again, run a corner. Mm. Block the end. So he did that for an entire game. I don't know how many guys would have had the kind of patience because not only he's telling me what I need to do, he also got to go through the reads. Yeah. He got to worry about what defense they're running, where he's going to go with the football. But he took enough time to say, oh, you know what? So that just got me, okay, now I need to get on top of this. Mm-hmm. And so I got more. I started watching more and more tape. I wanted to know as much as information as he did. And so it just got where we just like, it was like second nature. So he had a large part to do with my success oh, no because problem. he was very, very patient with me. Mm-hmm. I had coaches. Dan drafted me. Dan Reeves, he drafted me um, in the seventh round. But he said, look, his brother is an all-pro. It's got, I mean, something. the work ethic, there's got to be something. We're going to find yeah. something. We, we got to find Jeez. something. Mm-hmm. So I was on all the special teams, you know, which was at the time wide receivers didn't play a whole lot. I was you on kickoff. You kick wasn't hitting on nothing, man. Head bustle. Man, you wasn't <laughs> on head bustle, man. Stacks. Look here. You was laying people out? What? <laughs> I, was a, I was a gunner on the punt team. Mm. It's over. They couldn't do anything with me. I like, they put, they put the, uh, the double out there to put them head up. I break through like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> get on them horses, get him, get. Him. But you know it, it's different now. You don't really try to. For me, I was looking. I was looking, but I, I was looking, but I killed. Shit. It's I'm a trying different to get mentality now. Yeah, 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 yeah it's it different. different. And that's why it's, it's it, that's why it's so hard to evaluate guys because back when I played, they were trying to put, they were trying to twist your head. Trying helmet. to hurt you. You run that seven route like guys. I've never seen to run a one step slant route. 
But you know why? Because they're not worried about that kind of punishment that they was doling out back then. Back then, yeah. What? You run a one-step slant ride, it was over. Taking your head off. It was over. <clears throat> and, but now, so that's why it's so hard for us to evaluate when they say, well, what about this guy? What about that guy? The rules have been changed so much. Yeah. The way they attack the quarterback, the way they a defenseless receiver. I'm like, what is a defenseless receiver? I wish he got on helmets and shoulder pads. He's not defenseless? He's running the route. Yes! You're on a football field. You should expect to get hit. But, and then, and then you know, Ed came later. Terrell came later. And then we started. Mike Shanahan um, was my offensive coordinator when I first got there. He leaves, comes back as the head coach. And then Mike was tough. The expectations that he placed on... And that's what I that's what I like. He expects you to make every play. No excuses. Uh, he came in, you catch a pass, finish 40 yards. Mm -hmm. So he was way down the field. So we had to catch, I might catch a five-yard route, Take it but I had to run down. 40 yards. Yep. Because that's what Jerry Rice did. Yep. And so that's what that was So instilled. he came from San Francisco. He came too. from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So that was our mentality, is that get home. We were always trying to hit our head on the goalpost. And he brought a mentality of how we practice, how we met, uh, the expectations, have fun. But the thing was, I, I just remember he's always saying, okay, 84, get them going. Because that was, you know, in, in, in training camp, we're going to hit it. Hey, coach's uh, offensive coordinator, Gary Kubiak, my position coach, he said, 84, we need you to strike up the band today. So now it's time. It's time. It's time. I'm, it's time. I'm talking. Right. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> 84 gonna get somebody today. Somebody gonna get it got today. <laughs> they don't want to see 84. Y'all don't want this. Y'all don't want these kind of problems. And man, it, it, we it would get it would get going because, and that that's 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 what it was about. I mean, guys, you guys have been on teams. All teams aren't equal. No, nope. you're right. closer on some teams than others. Yes, we did things together. We go to the movies. We went yeah. out to eat. We go bowling. We, you know, we play cards. We roll dice. That's officially, actually, how Club Shay Shay started. Club Shay Shay started back in 1995 in Greeley, Colorado. It was my teammates' room. Mm -hmm. They had the PlayStation. They had all. It wasn't my room. Because I'd be wanting to go to bed. But you were just the host. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, hold on. How you name a club and it's not even your room? <laughs> Guys be playing PlayStation, playing all these games. We rolling dice. We playing cards. Beer. All that. And so John would come up. Guys would come up and we'd be all time of the night. So the uh, coach would come in for bed, check. He'd look and see, okay. So we staying up. We got practice the next morning, but we staying up 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. As long as I in the hotel. Yeah, because we've we in the dorm. We've yeah. in the dorm do, uh, uh, doing training camp. But they know. Club Shay I will be ready. I'm gonna be ready. To, hey, I'm gonna be ready to go. And then Club Shay Shay was. There you go, Stack. I mean, Shay Shay. Rolling die. All right, man. We had it. We had it crunk up in there. So that's where Club Shay Shay started. That's what Club Shay Shay started back in 1995. It was called Club Shay Shay. It was Club. Shay I named it. They're like, how you gonna I named it. They're like, how you gonna give a name yeah. to somebody else's room? I said, cause y'all don't know when to go to bed. And, and I'm not finna, I'm not finna have y'all in my room till no yeah. three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So I can come go and come as I please. And I been my homeboy was talking about it. He uh, uh one of the assistant coaches at, at the Chargers. And we was talking about it. He's like, you know what, man, I was just thinking about that. Club Shay Shay wasn't even your room. That's funny as hell. I said, I know. <laughs> and that was, that was yeah, one that's reason. Going reason. Down, yeah. right. Oh, it was reason. going down. It, it was great. But like I said, guys, you guys have been on teams where you're really, really close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were really, really close. We everything we, we did. We bowl. You know, like I said, we go, go bowling together. We went to the movies together. We did almost everything together. And in training camp, you know, John, like I said, John would come up, guys would come up, and they might not even roll dice. Just they would just show just, their face. Just show their face. Show their face. Just show their face. Show they face. People don't understand how important chemistry is. Those are normally championship quality teams. At least yeah. you have the ability to mm -hmm. win a championship yes. with those kind of teams. I, you know, I was fortunate enough to play on a team that won. I was on a team that I thought we had the talent, but we just didn't We didn't vibe like that. Right. Our chemistry wasn't like right. that. So I tell people all the time, it's more people, oh, chemistry, that's a class that no, you take in, no. in high school and college. No, it's not. No. That's just the most nah, important you, recipe. Nah, 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 nah. You can't force it either. No, nah, no, nah, you can't. You guys got to believe, sincerely believe that that guy has my best interest and he got to know that I have his best interest mm -hmm. and the common goal. I like, and I tell, you know, when I talk to young guys, I say, look, whatever you want to do, 
I got no problem with that. If you want to be uh, go to the Pro Bowl, or you want to be all this, or you want to be uh, MVP, be that, but not at the expense of the team. Yeah, thanks. Not a, because if you want to be that, I know you're going to put the time in. I know right, you're going to put the effort in. You're going to put the training in. You're going to put the studying in. But not at the expense of the team. Right. Team is the most. And there have been a lot. Of, and that's mainly when I butted head with guys. When I know they all, they cared, all, they, yeah, all they cared about was staff. They, they ain't care seven. nothing about the team. Yep. That, that rubbed me the wrong way. Yep. That, I, sure. I, 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 don't, I don't want no part. I don't that rubbed us the wrong way. Yeah, no, we didn't. We, we wasn't having it. See, y'all needed. See, y'all had no enforcers though. Yeah. See, y'all needed somebody on that block, like two, like your boy. See, your boy. Hey, he could have helped us. Hey, out. Hey, yeah. hey, he tried. He tried to post me up. Tell him what happened. When you tried to post me up. So this is basically what happened. It wasn't a basketball involved. We was offset, and I told him I could handle him. And I told him I could post him up, and I tried to back him down. I couldn't move him right there, but I didn't have a basketball. Right. He was going there. What hey, kind man. of shoes you have? Huh? No, he no, got a basketball. I, I, I had right tennis shoes. Uh -huh. I, I tried to back him down. Hey, what I have on? You had dress shoes. You had dress shoes. Had on dress shoes. But, I said you ain't going. I said you go nowhere. But said, hey, but I just figured it out. Got to go around. <laughs> it. Make him move. Hey, hey, can't go through it. I tell you, you what, don't nut make me. Don't nut me. Imagine that forum. Ain't nobody going for that. Imagine that forum. Tell me what it was like. So after you, you and John get your chemistry. Tell me what it was like playing with the one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, and he had a cannon too. It was great. It was unbelievable because, like, like I said, he was a guy. John was all about respect. You see how some of these guys, where they don't get the ball, they throwing water coolers and they stomping. Don't do him like. Don't don't show him up. And he would never show you up. You run the wrong route. You tip a pass, and he gets intercepted. He's never gonna show you up. If if you did something that he didn't agree with, he's gonna talk to you on the sideline, or he's gonna wait to the next day and he'll talk to you behind. That's what I love. Respect. Don't ooh, don't show me up. Cause don't don't let that fool you. Don't think because now you are more high profile than me. I eat your ass up out yeah, here. Right, for real. Cause I, at the end of the day, the one thing uh, Mary Porter, Mary Porter, and Barney Porter taught me: when you go somewhere, you a man. Yeah. When you leave there, you be a man. Yeah. So don't talk to me sideways. He gave me that respect. At a, I mean, he, he didn't have to do that right, because right. he had all, he was John Elway. He was, the man. he was already an MVP. He was already a Super Bowl. You know, had gone even though he hadn't won. So he had already built up his credentials. He showed a young kid mm -hmm. respect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so for me, okay, whatever you need. Like I said, I there are a lot of great quarterbacks in that I went to the Pro Bowl, went with El, went with Marino, played with Warren Moon, Joe Montana. My last Pro Bowl, Peyton Manning and Tom Brady were my quarterbacks. Mm. You didn't catch one pass. <laughs> I didn't catch one pass. <laughs> I didn't go look here. I went over there for a vacation. <laughs> I didn't tell nobody on last stack. I went over there for I looked at the pro the guy looking at it trying to win the car, win MVP. It yeah, was a I'm vacation sure for me. That, I had a, I did everything I needed to do to get over here. Yes, sir. I ain't trying to win no MVP yeah, over here. About that yes, shit. Nah, nah. But man, he man, look here. Of the superstars that I had, like I said, I didn't play with him. Give me seven. Mm -hmm. Because the way he treated me. I cool. love the fact that he didn't show, you know, show up. He yelling and screaming on the sideline. I ain't all about that yelling and screaming. Mm -hmm. I ain't all about that. <clears throat> All my coaches, I, I, I've always told them, I say, you can correct me in front of anybody, but you can't curse me. I say, Mary Porter, who gave me everything but life, never cursed me. So now if you want, hey, you want to see me mm -hmm. act the fool? You're not doing that. Let it come out your mouth. Call me a mofo. Or yeah. extra, then, then you're going to have to deal with me because I'm going to have to leave. Yeah. So I've never had a confrontation with a coach. Respect. Never really had no confrontation with a, with a player, really. Mm -hmm. I think I got, you know, it wasn't really no fight. It was it was cold one day, uh, and I remember this like, yeah, it was 1994, and we were doing walkthroughs, and it was cold. I mean, I was bundled up, and this guy named, he told a story, so I go ahead and tell it to Reggie Rivers. And he, I threw him the ball. You know, I had, re you know, caught a pass, and I threw him the ball, and he threw the ball back and hit me in the face with it. Oh, you had to take your helmet off already? Yeah. We, we, we didn't have no helmet on. Okay, we were just yeah. doing walk through. Yeah, walk through. And so he, you know, I threw him, you know, I threw him the ball and he shoved the ball and hit me back in my face. You started it though, Shannon. No, I no, I threw him the ball. I'm like, here, here, bro. After you caught him. And like, no, no. But he was just on the scout team. He was just on scout team. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like the defense. He was just, he was an offensive player too, but just good. So we would walk through like offense. And so we have 11 offensive players. We have the uh, rest of the offensive players playing the defense. Right. So, you know, you know, I did. I mean, I, I threw him the ball. Yeah. All he could either say, just drop it, let it hit the ground, but don't throw it back and let me hit, hit me in the face. Yeah. 
So I just I just walked up and mm. he like <laughs> just, <laughs> Yeah, that that was it. So and I that was that was that was the only time I've ever even come close uh to getting into it with somebody in the NFL. Now that was the only time only got one fight in college. Um, with a defensive lineman, you know we Joni. You know mm-hmm. how I mean, yeah. guy. You go to a black college, it's all about Joni. Yeah, it's all about yeah. if you come in late, you come in the cafeteria late. Whatever you got on, we are gonna make fun of it. We gonna, we gonna yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna light you up. Yeah, and so you know I'm lighting him up. Now remind you all the upper, you know, seniors and juniors there, but he's a freshman like me, but he's a D lineman. So I'm lighting him up. You got the it, table crying, everybody laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so but guess what he gonna do? He gonna come and try to take it out on me. So I, you know, I, uh, I got think I had like a sandwich or something, and so I had some mayonnaise in the bowl. Dude took the mayonnaise out the bowl and just put it on my and threw it on me. Wah, 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 wah. That wasn't just one. You gave him a whole boy. I, I, a variety. I, I, I gave him an eight piece <laughs> with two extra, biscuits. Extra crispy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stay. It happened. I don't. I don't even remember how it happened, <laughs> but I just remember the next day. Coach said, "God damn, sharp." What you doing? I said, Coach, the dude threw mayonnaise on me for no. Everybody was laughing. <laughs> you must have been frying him, though. You had to be frying him. Cooked his I ass. loved him. I loved him. <laughs> you had to be frying him. I, I, I loved him. I loved him. Because you, know, you know when they get mad, they pick nah, out the one person on, that man. didn't say nothing. Be like, right. what you laughing for? Right, <laughs> exactly. And because I was a freshman like he was, but I was, you know, I was a wide receiver. He was a defensive lineman. So all bigger. the other people laughed. Oh, he was bigger than you. Yeah. But I got to quit. Yeah. See, that's what you got to do. The okay, moment you first. feel tension, hit first. Always. Because, like I said, yeah. now if I if I fire up one of these couple of these things and you still standing, <laughs> yeah. I got a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something right. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, these know, these I don't know if too many motherfuckers take these things flush. Not these first three. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> so that that was it. But for the most part, I get along. You know, I'm I'm joking. Oh, right. Stags know when he first came on. I'm joking. I'm, yeah, we joke, we had us a good right, old time. Right, Man, right. you come on the show, you know yeah. how we are. We we yeah, laughing, yeah. we joking, we carrying on. Right. And that's kind of how my persona was, my personality was in the locker room. Laugh, joke, have a good time. Hey, that's it. It was it wasn't no jokes when y'all was chasing that ring, though. When you no, 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 I'm about that. No, 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 no. I'm 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 trying to win. Now don't don't be bull jiving out here right. on my watch. Time and place. <laughs> time and place. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's a time like stretching. When we go out to practice and we stretching, that's the last time. Before that, we gonna get all the joking aside because once Mike blow that whistle, it's over. Mm-hmm. Lock in. That's mm-hmm. it. That's it. I'm mm-hmm. all. I'm all about. Hey, That's I'm really trying to put that work in. Yeah. And I had I had great teammates because I, as I'm practicing, I'm like I'm asking the guys, uh, uh, Dedrick Dodge. I'm asking Ronnie Bradford. I'm asking Tony Veland. Okay, you cover this route. Am I tipping my route? Because I need feedback. Because if I'm tipping something, I'm giving something I off. Know. I need to know. Let me know what's going on. Tipping me, showing the defender your route. I'm sure okay. I'm, I'm leaning into a route or I'm doing something. Uh, I never, never forget Dedrick Dodge, who's one of one of my best teammates. He's probably one of the guys that helped me the most. He said, I noticed something. I said, what you talking about? He said, when you get ready to break out, you start getting up on your toes. Getting excited. He says, don't do that. He says, because every time you do that, I'm going to drive that route. Mm-hmm. So that taught me, okay, I got to. Hide it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Football term, you know what that means when you say mm-hmm. drive that yeah. route? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Come up out it, press yeah. it, run yeah. through it. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. I need y'all football mm-hmm. turns. <laughs> man, man, be no, yeah, yeah, yeah he know. He gonna, he gonna drive football. around. He gonna drive right. around. And so you you start, you know, because I need, like I said, I need feedback. Now, mind you, it's easier for a guy to cover you in practice because he sees you every day. Mm-hmm. He knows all your moves. Knows he knows all the routes, little setups. Right. And he when jo- he starts hearing things, if John audibles, he know what that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but a guy that only sees you once a week and yeah. just watching you on, on tape, he's not going to be able to get all those subtleties. Mm-hmm. So I just need to make sure I'm not tipping it enough that he can see it come yeah. game time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, he's seen this route year after year after year after year. Well, it's, 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 man, it gets difficult to be the guy when you going against him every day mm-hmm. in practice year after year after year. But come game time, it was a, it was a piece of cake. I see, I, I kind of feel like you were someone, like you said, you started at receiver once you came in, moved into tight end, but I kind of think you reigned in the era of athletic mm-hmm. tight ends that could have played receiver, but you yeah. were tight end. So guys like Tony Gonzalez, mm-hmm. uh, Gates, mm-hmm. uh, today Kelsey, mm-hmm. uh, Kittle, yep. you were them and, and, and played like that before it was real. Tight ends used to just be blockers. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first, when I got to the league, you wanted the tight end to be an extension of your offensive line. Those guys were like six five, six six, two hundred and 
285, almost 300 pounds because everybody wanted to run the football. They're like, if you bring your, if you got a run game and a defense, you can win a championship. All of a sudden, they throw me out there and like, I'm a mismatch because if you walk your, you walk your safety, I'm a bully him. You walk your linebacker, I'm gonna run around him. Mm -hmm. So now, okay, how do we do that? So I started in AFC West, and guess what happened? They go draft Tony Gonzalez. They go draft Freddie Jones at, at the uh, Chargers. They'll go get Ricky Dudley. Not everybody's starting okay. Bigger. Uh, they won't. They won't. Athletic. But, I, but see, what they didn't understand, I was small. Julio Jones is bigger than I am right now. He's playing wide receiver than what I played at tight end. Mm -hmm. But when I log out on them stacks, they, I put this 500 <laughs> on them stacks. That's what it was. That we're going nowhere. I get it right. Hey, I get you right here. Er, er, just driving. So, so your, your blocking had a lot to do with you making them pro a pro. Role. No, no. <laughs> no, right. really okay, then, no, that, no, that, no, that's no. all I was trying to say. Let me get the, that clear. Here's the thing. It wasn't your blocking. This is the way I look at it. I was more of an asset in the passing game than I was a liability in the run game. Okay. You see, you look, everybody's like, oh, look at Trey, man. Trey, Trey, Trey Young don't play any defense, but he lighting you up for getting your 30 yeah, on offense. Yeah. So that's a good trade up. James Harden. Yeah. Same James same. Harden ain't sitting in the chair in front of anybody, but when he lighting you up for 40, mm -hmm. he lighting you up for 40. And so that, that was my thing. I blocked well enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody got 2,000 yards running behind me. Yeah, you're right. You sure right. GD. GD or MVP. Yeah, GD. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at all them 1,000-yard rushes I blocked for. Now, they mm -hmm. weren't playing with 10. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying I'm I'm George Kittle or I'm Gronk. You did what you did. Yeah, but I I got in the way. Mm -hmm. So, two Super Bowls in, in uh, Denver, and you go to Baltimore mm -hmm. with one of arguably – one of the greatest defenses, <laughs> yeah. they say. Uh, you were there. But talk to me about being able to go over there, play play with Ray Lewis, play with that team, and win. Man, I didn't want to leave Denver. Um, but, it, but it was a decision. Compton. Huh? Mm -hmm. You went from uh, Hollywood to Compton. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to leave. But it's kind of like a situation where I, I just didn't think I was getting the respect that I deserved. So this and, is after, what, year 10? Not the, year, okay. year 10. Um, and here I am, seven. I had gone to seven Pro Bowls. I was first team all pro four times, two Super Bowls, and all of a sudden, I guess because John was no longer there, they didn't think I could play. But they had started to use me differently. Ed had started, well, a Rod Smith had started to become the number one receiver, so they started throwing him a little more. I could still do the same thing, but I just wasn't getting the same opportunities. And so it was like Baltimore, when Baltimore came, I was like, Baltimore, what a they were 8-8 eight and eight the year before. I mean, I knew a little bit about Baltimore, the Ravens, because we had played them in 96. Never in my wildest imagination that I ever think I was going to get out of Denver. You know, I, I was always thought, like, but then, you know, you see Joe Montana didn't finish his career. And, you know, so I'm like, mm -hmm. all these guys started. Bruce Smith was, was all of a sudden going to be, uh, was going to Washington. And then uh, talking to Ozzy on the phone, um, I saw Ray, as a matter of fact, that was in 1999, I saw Ray in Atlanta. He said, man, if we get you, mm. we can win the Super Bowl. He said, because we got it on defense, we got it on lock. We just need a veteran guy, man, to get them guys ready, man. So I, I go to Baltimore, and I'm we practicing against them. Now, I know what good defense is, and I remember going in my room, and I'm like, they don't realize how good they are. Mm. It was that good, huh? They, yeah. I said, this might not be up. Nobody's ever seen anything like this. Mm. They could fly. They were sideline to sideline. I yeah. mean, it was it was tough for us to get a couple of yards here and there. And then you watch it. You're standing on the sideline and you're watching it. And you watch the physicality and you watch the relentlessness in which they attack people. I don't think very many of those guys could play today because it was just they were knocking All people out. out. They were knocking the quarterback out. They were knocking the receivers out. They were knocking running back. They were putting everybody out of the game. Mm. And then everything just started to click. Now we weren't that good offensively. Who was your quarterback with it? Uh, we started with Tony Banks. Uh huh. And then they moved Trent Dilfer. Dilfer right? Trent Dilfer came mm -hmm. in there. And then basically the way we started playing. We felt if we could get seven on you, we get ten points. We can get ten points. That's all we need. And we didn't turn the ball over. We're good. You couldn't beat us. Cancel. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't beat us. So now we playing for we playing for one play. Hence the, that's what they call me big play Shay. Because I was the guy that was gonna get the big play. We get that one play, if we get that early, and we didn't turn the ball over, it. it's over for you. It's curtains. So once we got a lead, we got to the playoffs. And once we got a lead, man, I'm like, man, we going to the Super Bowl. 
we going to the Super Bowl. And then once we got to the Super Bowl, I'm like, I'm looking at the Giants. I'm looking at them warm up. I they like, don't stand a chance. <laughs> they don't stand a motherfucking said, chance. They're going to be lucky. I said, they be lucky to get 10 points. Little do I know, they was only going to get seven, and they got that on the kickoff. <laughs> yeah. They got yeah. it on kick return. Yeah. But that defense, nah, that was that was a special unit. And when you you know, you know look back at it and you like compare defenses, it's kind of hard. It's hard to do, but though, yeah. I don't know if they've been a better defense than the 85 Bears and the 2000 Ravens. Now, I'm Ooh. biased because I happen to be there. But when you give up 165 points year, in 16 yeah. games, yeah, that's crazy. That's and you don't let uh, you don't give up, you go 16 games, and all the teams combined don't rush for a thousand yards. Mm. That's impressive. That's tough. That, that that's that's, that's, that's impressive. And so it was it was it was different because Brian Billick didn't care. We didn't have curfew. I mean, we went to Super Bowl the night of, the, day, the uh, week of Super Bowl. We didn't have curfew. Mm. He had one simple rule. Brian Billick had our head coach. He had one rule. He said, "Guys, I want you to ride the bus." To and from practice. Make sure that was his only rule. And then we get guys, that, these young guys talking about, man, my mom here, I think I'm going to ride back. I said, no, here you ain't. I think Coach just gave us one rule. We don't only, have curfew. Only thing. Now you about to hear, you going to mess that up. I, I wish you might. <laughs> it's always, <laughs> you know what? Thanks, it's always somebody. Always one. That bro. you can do right, they want to do wrong. For no reason. For no reason. So, nah, so we we got that. That was that was a great time. I got to meet some great friends. Ray, Rod Woodson. Guys that I'm friends with to this day, it was a great opportunity. Um, Ed Reed, Ed, no Ed wasn't there when Ed I was there. there. No, okay. no Ed, 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 younger, Ed, younger yeah, way younger, yeah. younger than me. Mm-hmm. Ed came in maybe like my six, oh five, oh my six? I think my last year. Yeah, I think Ed might have came in my last him. year. Yeah, I played, yeah. I played against him against in, him because you went back and you you retired in Denver. In Denver, went back yeah. to Denver. Um, Tell me how important that was to you. Well, we won the Super Bowl. Uh, I lead the team in receiving, and they draft the tight end in the first round. So what are they telling me? <laughs> so so me now, my thing is to get him ready to play. Mm-hmm. See, people look at it like, well, it's not my job. Yeah, actually, it is my job. Because what if something happens to me during the season mm-hmm. and he's not ready to play? Right. Now my job is to get him ready to play beyond how you practice, how you study tape, what's expected of you. Mm-hmm. That's my job, the to bet. prepare him to get him ready That's to go bet. play. Real Going bet. back to Denver, um, talking to Mr. B, who was the owner at the time, um, he's like, I should have never let you go. He said, I'm sorry for that, but you coming back, you coming back home. I want you to finish in that Bronco uniform. And then I talked to Mike, um, because Mike and I, my first go around, we weren't that close. Because I don't think he he thought there. He just looked at me as just catching, but there were so many other things that once I left, he started to see that the locker room, missed, yeah. how guys, how pr- practice, how he how held guys accountable. Then you start to see sometimes you don't realize or value things until it's gone. Yep. So having a conversation for him, and I was like, yeah, it's the right thing to do. You know, I went to Seattle, but that was too far. My kids were young then. I was like, nah, they don't need to be getting on the plane, coming 13 hours Uh I mean, 13, six hours to come see me flying from Atlanta to, to Seattle, uh, visited the Raiders. But it just didn't, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. It was, it was meant for me to start my career in Denver, have a brief interruption, and finish my career in Denver. And that was the, the best thing that ever happened because the fans embraced me coming back. They always loved me because mm-hmm. they saw how hard I worked, and, and it meant something to me. Winning meant something to me. Mm-hmm. Losing hurt me. Yeah. Um and and I just wanted to make sure I didn't I got the taste of losing out of my mouth as quick as possible, but I think they appreciated the hard work that I put into it. Yeah, that's what's up. So, coming from where you came from, you know, 1000 square foot center block place, whole bunch, of, whole, bunch of, whole bunch of whole bunch of kids to a successful career, three Super Bowls and being inducted in the Hall of Fame in 2011. What did that mean? Did you ever see that? Was it ever a dream? No. <clears throat> um the Hall of Fame, I mean, it was so far. Um, that's the NFL heaven. Yeah. That's where the greats go to rest. Mm-hmm. And to be thinking of 25,000 men that have either coached, played, or been in a, a front office in the NFL, I was 267th member, 268th member in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. A skinny kid from Glenville, 3,500 people, two traffic lights, graduating class of 60 in high school mm. to go here it it seemed like a, a a dream but 
if people knew how hard I worked and I spoke about it, I remember, uh, uh, you know, in my senior year, you get a senior book. Every girl signed my book. Ooh. Shannon, when you go to the NFL, don't forget me. Shannon, when you're famous, don't forget me. Every single I one of them. It. Because I told them, I'm playing in the NFL. I said, I'm going to the NFL. They couldn't believe it because nobody had ever gone, really done anything. Couldn't see that. They, they, they couldn't see it. I said, I'm going to the NFL. I know what they see. Yeah, I said, I'm going to the NFL. I said, Man, you ain't going to no NFL. They play on TV. They make thousands, thousands. Yeah, that's what, that's me. That's going to be me. Mm-hmm. And I just, everything that I did was preparing me for that. Now, the Hall of Fame. Now, I, the NFL, yeah, I wanted to go to the NFL. I wrote down in my memory, in my book, I said, I'm going to go to the NFL. I'm going to go to Pro Bowl. I'm going to the Super Bowl. I ain't put Hall of Fame in there because I, my mm-hmm. mind wouldn't even let me, some things, your, your mind wouldn't even let you dream, wouldn't right. even let you fathom. Right. But I, all that other stuff, and sometimes I still, I, I still p- pinch myself to think, damn, I'm one of the best to ever do this. Like, wow. It don't really, it, it, it doesn't really dawn on you. Like when you do, when you do it, when you, because you're not doing anything, oh, man, I'm going to the Hall of Fame, I'm going to the Hall of Fame. You just want to be the best you possibly can. You want to just do everything you possibly can to help your team win. Mm-hmm. That's all I want to do. I wanted to be about, I was always about the team. And to see where I came from working in those fields in South Georgia, uh, Savannah State, seventh round draft pick to this, it doesn't even seem, it doesn't even seem real. It doesn't even seem like it's possible. But it happened. I made it happen. I was very fortunate. Mm-hmm. I had a mom that made a decision that the best thing for my bro- my, fa- my brother, sister, and myself was to go stay with my grandmother and grandfather. My grandmother and grandfather taking us in, teaching us discipline, being because there were expectations. You work. You know, my, my grand <laughs> the first time the guy came by, Joe Tatum came uh Came by the day before, and told us he wanted he wanted uh to work for it. My grandfather come back in the house. He said, "I want everything big enough to sop syrup to hit that truck tomorrow." Cause you know back then we rode in the back of the truck. Everything. So I'm five six years old. I get in the back of the truck going to work too, and that's why I tell people the easiest job I ever had was playing in the NFL. You said playing. It's playing. You was working. Yes. Play. Yes. That's working. People don't know what it's like right. to bail hate. Mm-hmm. Living in big old bed. See, stack. See, if you had that, see, stack. I got, got you right. You come on down there. I, I ain't have to bail no hay. <laughs> you ain't clip no onions, pick up no pecans, you tomatoes. Been some some green hay. Pecans. You did pecans? And yeah. figs. Yeah. Figs, too. <laughs> we, we ate figs. We ain't yeah, no figs. We just ate them. Yeah, but yeah. all, you know what? All that background, because everybody goes through some adversity. It's hard. You tell me a person that has not gone through anything, and I tell you a person that hadn't accomplished right, anything. Right, right, right. So no matter who it is, you look at LeBron's situation. He's a you know he come from a sing, you know a single mom, mm-hmm. um, teenage mom, move around. He came through something. Most of it. us over had to through. overcome right. adversity. Yeah. So we're used to playing basketball. Ain't no coming over adversity. No. Especially when you grow up like we grew up. That's overcoming adversity. Yes. Yes. So. To be to play a professional sport, yes, obviously you have to be talented, but you had to have to go through something to accomplish anything to get to that point. No question. And the the more you go through, the more hardened, determined, dogged, mm-hmm. dedicated you become to your craft. Polished. And then the sky's the limit. Mm-hmm. The sky's the limit. You just got to put the work in and say what's important to me. And what was important to me was making sure my grandmother never had to work another day in her life, making sure my kids, because I knew there's no way my kids could live one hour where you came from in a day that I had, let alone a minute. <laughs> so that was my, you know, to try uh-huh. to, to get them to go to college, take care of them in college and give them a head start because, you know, I started from the ground floor. Mm-hmm. At least I could put them on the second floor. So they could right. could start on the, could they could start on their own journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, as a, as a real true football fan, I'm glad that we because we don't hear too much about you in, in, on this in this side of you, re- reflecting you in this light. And as a true football fan, we really appreciate everything you accomplished, not only in your career as a player, but now what you're doing in journalism and in analyzing. I mean, you're one of the few people that has a, a very respected, real voice. You know, so talk voice. to me what is what it's like working with. 
uh, Skip uh, <laughs> uh, uh, on your show. It's one of the biggest shows. Uh, talk to us about that. Skip is unbelievable. Legend, shout out to Skip. Skip is unbelievable, man. Drip Bayless. Man, Drippy. Skip is... Drippy Drip. Look, it's kind of hard to explain it because people see his brash. They see you no. Know, they see his his tough exterior, and he's just like, uh. but man, he is. I remember the first time I met Skip, and I'm looking at him. I'm like, damn, he's small. And I'm looking at him, and he's talking. We're in production, and he's saying some of the things, and I'm like, I heard him say those things on TV. Mm -hmm. He really believed that. He really believed that Braun ain't that good. <laughs> When Skip left ESPN to come here, he wanted me to work with him. Mm -hmm. But Fox and FS1, they wanted another journalist guy. Mm -hmm. Because they said, okay, yeah, Shannon can talk about football, but can he talk about other sports? Yeah. Because before me, all the guys that did this daily, if you look at all the other shows, they're all journalist background. Right. They've covered baseball, they've covered football, they've covered basketball, Olympics, and so forth and so on. So I was the first athlete to do a daily debate talk show that talked about other As other things other than the sport that they played. And it was like, well, Skip, we really think Skip says, no, I want him. Mm -hmm. Well, Skip, let, let, let's see. Skip says, no. Skip says, I don't want to interview with anybody. I don't want to do anything. I want him. That's the guy. I've done my homework on him. I know what everybody said about him. Hard work. He'll put the work in. So Skip went to bat for me. It's mm -hmm. big. Let's just say everybody wouldn't have done what Skip done. Everybody they say they with you ain't with you. Because a lot of people, when they say, well, you know, we really want you to be like, okay. Yeah. Well, I tried, but, you know, they you know, they wanted to go in a different direction, so this is what we did. Skip as long says, as I'm no. good. Yeah, yeah, Skip says, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Skip says, nope, I want him. Mm -hmm. And so my job now is to make Skip right. Mm -hmm. To put the time in, to put the effort in, to put the work in, to study, to know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So for me, man, I do, I'm here because of Skip. I never wanted to live in L.A. I like it now. Ooh. But I never wanted to live in L.A. Never thought, I mean, like, I never thought in a million years I would spend anything more than a day in L.A. Mm. Come visit, you know, spend night and night, gone. I, I live in L.A. It's not my home. I'm like, man. And being on the show and being able to meet guys like yourself, uh, athletes and other athletes and entertainers man this is great this is the best job look mm. people don't understand how fun that shit it is, is. it man. is how fun it is because i look at it like when we talk we come on the show i'm at the barbershop my yeah. curse words yeah that's what we are that, and, and that's what i tell people i was like bro i'm at the barbershop yeah and the conversation that we have that we're discussing is that and that's what people that's what people that's why people watch these shows because they're having the same discussion that we're having exactly in the man, same really, tone. Man, Giannis better than LeBron. Man, LeBron, big stop. Boy, you lying, man. He ain't better than the king. Exactly. So we're, <laughs> we're having those same discussions, Yeah. but we just don't live television. Yeah. To see you guys, how you guys talk about your sport and how things are, and then have a, a football player come in and talk about it, or a baseball player, or ap uh, actors and things, it's still about respect. Yeah. It's still about working at your craft. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. And in this now... I just work at it. Now, I'm not obsessed like I was was. Because when I came out, when I first got here and I got the job, I would do the show, and then I would go home and re-watch the show in its entirety. Mm -hmm. Studying film. And I, I was just doing that over and over and then over and over. I was re-watching it like, re the show like four hours. Mm -hmm. And my agent said, Shannon, you're going to burn out. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. He said, you got to do That's something. I mean, I, I mean, I wasn't going anywhere. I mean, the first year I was here, I put 2,000 miles on my car. I went to work. I went to work out, and I came home. I didn't do anything. That was it. All the thing was just focus, like focus, just focus, just focus, just focus. He's like, Shannon, you can't do that. He said, you'll burn yourself you gotta out. got to live a little he bit. Said, yeah. He said, yeah. He said, you got to pace yourself. He said, if you want to do this, he said, at this pace, you'll last a couple of years. And so I started to pull back. I was like, okay. But it's a lot of work. To be good at anything, you got to work at it. I just sit here and imagine a battle off with you and Skip against Stephen A. and Max Kellerman. How do you think that would go? 
Man, they don't stand a chance. You think you got it? You know, you know, I'm I'm pulling, you know, I'm pulling. So you play. matched it up probably with Stephen A then, right? This you got Stephen A here. Stephen A don't want this smoke. Stephen A don't want all this smoke. He don't want this smoke. No, you don't want all, he don't want all this smoke. Two on two debate. That should be like an all star debate game or some shit like that. They just go off topics I, and I, fire it. This Stephen A. Ooh, uh, Stephen A, we can make this happen. Ooh, <laughs> That'll be dope. We can make this happen. That'll be dope. Come on to the smoke and we'll do it. <laughs> oh, we are, I'm all for that. But I, I, I always tell people about our relationship, uh, how I respect you and how I ask you questions um, about about the business and the advice you give me. People always ask about our relationship, but I say he's like a big brother. He, you know, he he all he always give me the right advice, even when he sees something that I've done or said. On Instagram, when I he might not say nothing that day, but when you see me, mm-hmm. you address it and tell him what to do. And I remember one time a little story. Um, it was something that happened recently about Kobe, and I was about to address it, but it was it was in a it was in a fine line where I was second guessing myself. And out of all the people I know, I t- I, I DM'd him and I asked him how should I respond, and he gave me the best advice. That's you dope. know what I'm saying? I responded the way. So I just you know this is just a, a, a question. I mean, people want to know our relationship. But it's just me telling them, you know, little little situations of us at work and how we became so close. I appreciate that. You know, I was, you you watch people and you watch LeBron, and LeBron people are like, oh, he too buddy buddy. The thing is, we got to get out of that out of our community mm-hmm. because we look at it, oh, that's a sh- sign of weakness. Mm-hmm. Well, such and such wouldn't have done that. Well, that probably explains why there are not more people like him. Because he didn't give the information that he could have. Yep. What good is information if you're not willing Can't to share, share it? it. Yep. That's what Kobe yep. said. He wanted to, in, to enhance people to so, touch And, and lives. that's the thing. I look at LeBron. Here's a guy that, okay, if you're not talking X's and O's, you don't want to know that bad business, Ackman? You don't want to know how this man built the brand from a single mother in Akron and he's one of the most popular athletes, one Never. of the most popular people in all the world? You, you wouldn't want that information? School? Right, right. Oh no, nah, that that's a sign of weakness. No, no. Each, each one teach one. Mm-hmm. Pass that information on. What good is all that information if you're hoarding it? Yeah. Look, my thing, the way I look at it, there's enough food. I want everybody, everybody to eat. Everybody can eat. Yeah. And if you can't eat right now, you can eat off my plate. Yeah, yeah. Our community, mm-hmm. man, we got to get away from that because yeah. it's us. And look, look, I'm talking about us. Yeah, and definitely. In our black community, yeah. we quick to say, man, I wouldn't. Have done. Why? Yeah. That explains, we got to get out of that crab syndrome. Well, we're always well, like you, this. We, we instead of crab opening our arms, yes. we're going to grab and yeah. help other. Yeah. Guy, when they come and ask me, so, okay, what? I explained to them, I talked to them. I said, okay, now, you can't not say anything because a lot of times guys want to get in this profession where they don't want to talk while they're playing. Yeah. Well, you got to give people a glimpse. You got to yeah. give people a, a little insight into what mm-hmm. they could possibly be getting. Right. That's why some guys do better on right. television They're than others. others. Mm-hmm. Because all of a sudden, like, that, that's, that's, but people knew what they were getting from me. It's like, if he's anything like some of the snippets and sound bites, me calling the National so Guard fun. or me doing things on the sideline, mm-hmm. that gave them a glimpse into kind of like how I was and who I am. Right. And I think the thing is that one of the things that really helped is when the cap situation kind of fell in our lap. Mm-hmm. Because as soon as we went on the air, that was it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I... It's kind of like a situation like going on in America right now. You couldn't straddle the fence on it. No, right. one side. You get you your a hey, one side. It's kind of like what's going on right now. You either with this government or, or you yeah, ain't no straddle. Well, you know, there's some things that no you, gray, you know, black or white. It's, it's, it's simple as that. <laughs> and for the very first time, there's not a whole lot of subjects that force you to pick a side. Right. It's like when you growing up, you be like, oh, okay, who you with? Okay, I'm with the skins. I'm with the shirts. Yeah. Who what side are you yeah. on? Yeah. It can't what. It don't matter to me. Nah, pick a side. Mm-hmm. So, and that fell in, and I think when, when people heard me articulate my thoughts on that situation mm-hmm. and give a little background in the context, I think people are like, okay, I'll tune in, I'll listen a little more. Mm-hmm. And they, because and, and, I kind of try and approach it. Yes, I'm a, as, as an athlete, but how about some less common sense? Mm-hmm. How about just, come on now, you on your job, and somebody does that to you. You okay with it? Nah. Well, t- he should take a pay cut. Okay, they come to you on your job. Mm-hmm. And they say, well, they need an extra 15000 for Karen and HR. Mm-hmm. You cool they cutting your pay? Nah, hell no. Nah. Okay, yeah. then. Yeah. Why you want him? It's easy for you to tell someone else to take a pay right. cut because yeah. it ain't your money. Yep, they ain't in them shoes. But ain't nobody else want to give up no money. Why they give up money so somebody else can make money, but you're going to take money from me? Right. right. 
Right. <laughs> so when you start, if you put things in people where people could like, I said, you got to put it on your scale. I said, it's easy. Yeah, if you're making 100000 and someone tells you you can make $15 million, but you got to give a million back, make fourteen. yeah, you do that. But you got to do it in your terms. Right. You're making 100000 right. Somebody says you got to give up 15000 or you got to give up 10000 So somebody, so we can hire somebody else. What that got to do with me? Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. hiring somebody else is taking food off my table. Right. So... I think that's the biggest thing is I just try to use logic. I try to put things in as simple terms as I possibly can to help people understand why I say what I said, why right. I said it. Uh, I don't take no shots at anybody because I know how hard it is to be an athlete. Mm, I love and respect man. everybody. It's never going to be me going <laughs> back and forth because like, lots, if a guy take a shot at me, bro, if you took offense to what I said, I'm sorry. That yeah. wasn't my intention. Right. I'm just doing my job because mm-hmm. I think, you know, you, as a professional athlete, I, I know what you're going through. Right. Maybe not to the scale, but I understand what it's like to be a professional athlete. And I'm not going to get, look, bro, a lot of you guys, I'm old up to be their dad. I, 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 don't, I don't think at this point, not shine, though, I think people pass taking stuff that you and Stephen A uh, to say because we kind of look at y'all, the leaders of our culture with this. Yeah. So if anybody taking it that way at this point, yeah. then they just being haters mm-hmm. at this right. point. But, I, that, you know, but the, and the thing is, for me, and they were like, well, you hate. We got to get out of this notion. If stacks, if I say I like apples and oranges, you can't say, "Oh, you hate bananas and grapes." Right, right. Bruh, you can't no, show I love. Just, you yeah, got to hate yes. the other. You can love both. I said, "Why? Why just can't I like apples and mm-hmm. oranges?" Right. I didn't say anything about right. it. That yeah. don't mean mm-hmm. I just like. Gra- right. I hate. And they do that with Kobe and Jordan yes. and Boyd all the time. Right. Yes, mm-hmm. there, there, there's enough greatness. And just because I choose one or the other doesn't mean I like him. Okay, if I say if I say LeBron was better than Kobe, that doesn't mean I dislike Kobe. Right. But or here's you, something that people don't really know. I used to cape for Kobe harder than what I cape for LeBron. Didn't know that. Finally admitting it. <laughs> you finally admitting it on the show. What? That you used to go harder for Kobe. I did. Thank people you. That's people, thank you. People that people that nobody knew that. Mm-hmm. My, uh, my, my my friend was telling uh the guy that cuts my hair, he said, here's the funny thing, and nobody was going to ever believe this. He went harder for Kobe than he ever did for LeBron. Kobe was my guy. Man, Kobe, Kobe was my – man, you couldn't tell me nothing <laughs> about, about Kobe. So I had – so this is how it was. I had Kobe. Kobe was my guy. He liked LeBron. So I said, okay, Kobe – so we got Kobe. I got Kobe. You got LeBron. We can never change players. You got to stay with Kobe. For, I got to stay with Kobe forever. You got to stay with LeBron. Mm-hmm. He from D.C. He know about this kid named Kevin Durant. <laughs> <laughs> so he want KD. He want KD now. I say, I tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Let me get the let me get You get me get LeBron. Go James. I'm a trade. <laughs> I'm a trade. So that, 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 okay. when, KD came, when KD came to the NBA, I got LeBron. Yeah. He took KD. So yeah. now I got Kobe and I got LeBron. So y'all, so y'all doing y'all own little barbershop trades. Can't yep. lose. <laughs> yep. Can't lose. That, that, and, that, and that's how it happened. But but and but that's the thing. I think that's the hardest thing for me is to try to get the, the uh, people to understand. Because I talk positive about someone else doesn't mean I got to talk negative on, about man. somebody. Because exactly. you understand that you don't have to shit on nobody else to make yourself look good. Right. It's, it's too many people these days feel like they got to belittle somebody to, to make, make themselves, themselves look good. Yeah. And that's one thing. We take a point on our show, speaking to everybody in here, we know how to get people on our show, yeah. disagree with them, but don't disrespect them. Yes. Don't respect them. Stay the same. Well, my thing, I think we both transitioned, all three of us transitioned, and we so we know the player side, and now we know the analyst side right. as well. And I think one thing I really take offense to, and I took offense to uh, Nick Wright, uh, who, who works for Fox, was if you've never really been in these trenches and done what we've done, like there's a way for you not to necessarily agree I or like the style week. or play or whatever, right. but you don't have to be disrespectful. Right. Because keep it real, you're doing this because you weren't good enough to do that. Right. You know what I mean? You wanted to be an athlete right. and you you came and you settled for journalism. Right. So to me, it, it, I, I think it, it really bothers me when analysts that or journalists that have never been in the trenches can't chew gum and, and dribble at the same time, like disrespect right. players. Right. Cause, cause, like you said earlier, because right. you, you know how hard it is to be right. in those shoes. I, 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 when I, you know what gets me upset? And that, Look, you cover the game. I, you look, if you cover the game long enough, you should have an idea of what you're talking about. I get upset when I see analysts say things that actually played the game. I said, if it was that easy, why didn't you do it while you right, were playing? Exactly. Ooh. Exactly. You, they, 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 I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. You saying that's easy? 
Well, you had an opportunity to do it. Why didn't you do it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and, and look, everybody has a job to do. And my thing is, I'm not trying to disrespect anybody. I'm just trying to make a point. And yeah, sometimes I get upset when when guys do certain things. I'm like, bro, why do you put yourself in harm? Why? You but it's coming from a like tr- from a yes. pure place though, yes. because you've been there and right. you know what the roadblocks you right. should be avoiding. Is. Exactly. I mean, if I see the guys, I don't see a whole lot of guys because I don't go nowhere, stat. Right. <laughs> but if I were to see the guys, I I would doubt the guys. Blah blah. I ain't got no beef with them, man. I, Man, you don't like. I said I love KD, mm-hmm. but KD you should be above a burn account. Yeah, that's what I told him. I was like, I don't we like that you burn. Him. I said, motherfucking text them straight from your phone. Yeah, that's my yeah. thing. Fuck yeah. you, Kevin Durant. If, Fuck you, it. if you got something to say, say it. Say it. Mm-hmm. I ain't hiding behind nothing. Say it. They're like, man, I can't believe you said that. I said, well, I can't believe you said what you said to me. So you got it back. <laughs> <laughs> right? The fuck you mean? <laughs> like, you think you just say whatever? <laughs> yeah. Fuck hey, you hey, mean. Don't, <laughs> hey, don't, hey, don't let the suit fool you now. Yeah, right. I, you ain't finna just talk to me. What you said to me? Yeah, I can't let you talk to me crazy. <laughs> but I, you know, like I said, but I think for the most part, it, it's the guys. When I see the guys, and having been on this show, the respect that they show me, though. absolutely, man, that makes me feel so good. I'm like, yeah. everybody. I mean, now they don't. Nobody call me my name. Everybody call me Unc. Yeah, yeah. I mean, from like AD Snoop. to LeBron like and, and, and D Wade, I'm like, man. Because you're speaking for us, too. Yeah. yeah. Whether no you question. know it or not, you're speaking for us, too. I do. When well, you open up doors, and that's what we continue to try to do is just letting people know. I mean, there's other ways you can touch the game. Affect right. the game, be a part of the game. And for your transition to be, like you said, you're one of the only, maybe, that, that covers all sports. Mm-hmm. And you were a professional football player. So mm-hmm. that takes a lot of hard work and dedication. So we appreciate that. And we love that. But I wanted to also talk kind of a two-part question here. The thought on Tony Romo's transition to being shit the highest paid analyst, but then also a two-part question, how NFL players are reacting to him making that kind of money and some NFL players don't make that kind of money. Yeah, they're looking at a guy guy that talks about the game is making more money than the guys that actually play the game. But it's about, it's not what you're worth, it's what you negotiate. Right. You can't get mad at that. Why am I mad at Tony Romo? Right. Clearly, that's his value. he got him, he got him. Yes. He's great great at it. He got him. Yes, yes. That's the way it works. Mm-hmm. Some, if, if you keep taking, if somebody's like, well, here, just take this. If all somebody do is give you this water and there's soda and you just keep taking the water, well, the soda is never an option. Mm-hmm. Well, if you just keep, t- if, if you're not willing to fight, mm-hmm. Tony Romo was willing to risk yeah. leaving CBS mm-hmm. and they understood that. So they had to pay him what his value was. Mm-hmm. You're not willing to risk game checks. So the owners know you're not willing to risk game checks. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, here, take this. Mm -hmm. And I get it. The core players, look, there's a 1%. Everybody's not going to be in that 1%, guys. They're guys that's never going to make $30 So this seems to be a lot of uh, of money for guys that say the core guys making $600, maybe $600 to a million dollars. So an extra $100,000 is a lot of money. But okay, for that extra game, what else are you getting? How much longer are those medical benefits going to be? Because five years, of, if the average NFL career is three years, so let's just say you're done with football by the time you're 25, 26. Why the hell is good as medical insurance is you're 31 and it's done? <laughs> Everybody's not going to be like a Shannon Sharp and get a job in television or be Michael Strahan right. or be Tony Romo. Right. So what about those guys? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so I don't think guys, you got to be willing. you got to be willing to risk something in order to gain something. No and so right now, the guys are not willing to risk checks to miss. And Nothing so I don't, I, don't, yeah, I don't understand what the rush is because here's the thing. Owners don't want to negotiate contracts with players with a year left on the contract, but they want to do this deal a year before it's up. Why? Right. right. Hmm. Beneficial for them. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But look, it's not easy when you got a lot of overhead you got a lot of responsibility because, mm-hmm. you know, you got kids in private school. You know, you got to pay for your house. You got mama house. You know, the thing is about the ownership is that they're lending uh, 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 people will give them a break. Says, OK, knowing that it's going to resume. But the NFL cut checks for them in March. You don't get your money till you play. Mm-hmm. So they'll put somebody else on the field <laughs> and people will watch it. Mm hmm. So that's what happened in 87 when they struck. Mm-hmm. They put what they call scabs, and people watched. Mm-hmm. And guess what happened? Some of the biggest stars you wouldn't believe crossed the picket line and went back out there. Yeah. So if a guy that's a superstar, superstar, is going to cross the picket line and go play, what chance to a guy, to another guy, no chance. that's barely that he might get he might get cut. 
Is Tony Romo that good? At, is he that good though? I like him. I think he knows. The I game never right. heard Tony Romo do a game because I, I don't I watch the game with sound. Yeah. Uh. Because see, they will influence what you might say. Exactly. See, for me, I know what the hell I'm looking for. Yeah. I, I did play the game. Yeah, mm-hmm. So right. I'm looking I, as Tony is talking. What Tony might be talking about. See, <clears throat> I don't watch the game looking for touchdowns or this or that. Yeah. I'm looking. Okay. Formational offense, defense. Mm-hmm. Why he scored. How he scored. What's coming. Not that he see fans only care about that he scored. The outcome. Yeah, yeah. I'm analyzing they man, ooh, they're playing they play in cover five, which is two man. Mm-hmm. Two deep safety, man underneath. Mm-hmm. Call it we call it cover five. So I'm looking at ooh, ooh, this is gonna be open you and see then, it before. Yes, it yeah, yeah. So I, I that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. And so for so me what's open in the cover five, the middle? You got you play, in, yeah. It's twenty-two men, but they play hard inside. They don't want you to get. They don't want to get beat inside. Okay, they don't want to. They don't want to get beat inside okay. because the safeties are splitting. Mm-hmm. So most time, more times than not, they're gonna jump hard inside. Keep you to the outside. Because the help. one thing you don't never want to got to do is cross your face, because that's the easiest throw in football. Mm-hmm. It's right there. Mm-hmm. Make it hard for it. And so I'm looking at that. I'm like, dude, stop letting the guy cross your face. But that's why I'm looking at. So I'm, I'm kind of analyzing the game like Tony. Um, and so in your way in, in my way right. so I don't listen no sir even basketball games you interested in calling games no 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 nah, I, I, that, that, that's too up. much prep that's too much prep. Slip up. a lot going on yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I might be out there cheering for gold <laughs> I might be out there cheering for gold oh oh get, get you didn't go. catch that you didn't catch that pass because you was out there doing something for two so <laughs> 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 but that, that that's yeah uh, I mean that's a lot of money yeah but uh, um, that makes it better that makes it it's for the industry. Don't get it now. Come on, yeah. man. They open yeah, doors. So you got the next person. You yeah. open the doors. Yeah, I don't, open the doors. I never begrudged anybody for getting their money. For getting their money. Can't do it. What I'm counting? What I'm pocket watching for? Can't do it. Won't do it. But you know, some guys, man, he ain't worth that. Like, ain't coming out my pocket. Yeah, it ain't hurt let me. me. See, let me see. Oh yeah, my money's still there. So they ain't got nothing to do with me. Uh-huh. Where's your stacks at? My stacks at? Yeah. They ain't no many days. Ah, see? Oh, you see? Right, yeah, no see, money. I know you, you used to walk around with a bunch of money in your pocket. Ain't they ain't no many days, but it ain't far. Drug dealer days. It ain't far. It ain't far. Back what? in the day, you walk around with a bunch of money in your pocket. Not back in the day. Do. Yesterday. No, what no, no I don't do that no more. Still do. I mean, back in the when I played in my height. That was you? Yeah. I keep. I, I used to I, walk around. Look. So 2500 that's all. If, 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 I, if you caught me with less than five grand on my in my pocket, call the cops. Somebody just robbed me around the corner. That's <laughs> <laughs> <Still> silly. <laughs> now. Them days you can't do it. You no, 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 no. I be spending days. it too much, man. I kept a stash shit just screaming my name. Like, I got to spend it. I don't be having no money. Yeah. All credit cards for me. Fuck yes, that. Yeah, but, that, but I don't, I don't, <laughs> shoes is my thing. That's your and p- bags, too. Oh, yeah, you know, I keep, you know, I keep a little something. Yeah, I, I, you, got I, all, I like, you got all the dope bags now. Yeah. But that's, that, but that's, the, but, and I tell people, it's like, say, I, I save to a certain extent. I do. I said, but I want my 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 enjoy money it. and my last breath to run out at the same time. Yeah. Enjoy that shit. I said, what about me enjoy? Why I gotta leave everything for everybody else to enjoy? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I, I earned it. Yes. Let me enjoy but people it. don't realize we get a lot of shit free too. Yeah. What do you get? Who, who, who your hook up? Yeah. I ain't get no, oh, no, not the shit you got. <laughs> Well, Jack, does a ba- Jack does a begging section. That's where we be getting all this shit for free. Well, I, I, didn't, I don't have to beg him today because I asked him for a, a jersey he's supposed to get from a Lamar Jackson jersey. So I'm going to say he had pulled the Baltimore Ravens, but I, I got failed more. to get my jersey yet, dog. You going to get the jersey, man? I don't know. I, I might have to call. Uh, who can I call? Ghostbusters? No, they don't, they, they don't work. I get, the, I get the jersey. Oh, I got pulled. You got pulled in Baltimore? Yeah. Oh, you did play in Baltimore, right? I did play in Baltimore. Yeah. They might know you there. They yeah, might know yeah, you there. They might know. They might know you there. <laughs> Speaking of Lamar Jackson, coming from an era where there was Doug Williams, Warren Moon, Randall Cunningham, a few other mixed mm-hmm. in, but those are only real prominent ones. I hope I'm not missing anybody to an emergence of the black quarterback today. It's unbelievable because you look at the MVP guys, you look at Lamar One, you look at Patrick Mahomes, you look at Russell Wilson, yeah. Deshaun, you look at Deshaun, Deshaun Watson, Watson. Like, look at it. Dak Prescott. Okay, because you know you, be, you try not to throw Dak in there. I put Dak in I there. But you waited till I said his name. No, I put Dak in You know in how there. you be hating on Dak, man. But, I mean, look, I, I had to say his name for you, you to say mean? it, Shannon. He he like the he like the fifth best brother quarterback. That's a, that's an accomplishment. <laughs> that's pretty good. No, but no, but 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 you see what's happening. Defenses are getting faster. The field is spread more, uh, uh, more spread. Basketball. So now you need guys that can get out of harm's Side way, get outside and make plays Keep in the pocket. Play. Not saying the statue quarterback is, is but it's it's getting away yeah. from them. And the NFL is a copycat league. Yeah. They see the success, Lamar. They see the 
success on Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson and Russell. Cam was the MVP a few years ago. Yeah. So now it's like, well, hold on. That's something there. Instead of getting these guys and try to make them conform to what we think is normal, how about we get these athletic guys that can throw the football and put them in systems that are conducive for what they do? John Harbaugh, they drafted Lamar Jackson. Instead of trying to make him a pocket passer, let's put him in a system where he can flourish. Okay, they have the best record. He wins the MVP. He's only going to get better. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the thing was for the longest time, people don't really, coaches really don't want to coach. They want to be lazy. Yeah. See, to get a guy with have that kind of ability, you got to coach. You got to put an implement a system in, and you got to coach it up. They just want to just plug the guy. In. Look, everybody can't be Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't be a Tom Brady or Peyton Manning. Right. Do some coaching. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing now, man, it's great. I, I love seeing it. I just because there are a lot of guys that was before these guys that that could have done this, mm -hmm. yeah. they the but chance. they didn't get the opportunity. Get the uh, you know, Warren Moon had to go to Canada for five years. Mm -hmm. He went five years of his life where he could have been down here playing in the mm -hmm. NFL. But now guys, are they're showing that they deserve an opportunity, and guys are cashing in those opportunities, and you see the sky's the limit. We see all these guys were in the playoffs last year mm -hmm. with the exception of Dak, but Dak's been in the playoffs two of the four years he's been in the league, right. and he's only going to get better. Mm -hmm. So, With that said, do you think we'll see an emergence of black executives, black head coaches, black more behind the scenes. Well, that's what do. you need. You need you need you need black guys that's in position of hiring, so they'll hire others. They look like uh, it's funny right? that we got seventy percent, you know, black players in the league, and we only got a handful of black coaches. Yeah. But you know, most times than not, when you interview somebody, you interview somebody that looks look like, like you, you, that sounds like you, Man, that thinks talk like that you. Sh talk that and shit. It, it 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 takes it takes something special. To yeah. branch outside of that, mm -hmm. what you're comfortable with, what's what seems to be normal, right. uh, you know, and hopefully we, we start to see that. That's what we need. We need guys in, in manage in management roles mm -hmm. that's going to take our opportunity and give guys a fair shake. And, and when a guy doesn't win the Super Bowl in his first year, don't can him, yeah. right? Because, but you know. Because when we they get black guys get canned, we, man, they don't resurface like this. It ain't, like no, it, 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 ain't it, it ain't the normal just can. They they go get the trash, the, tr the truck come by, dump you the trash there, yeah. take it to the field, smash you, no. then put dirt on top. <laughs> hey, they do the whole thing. Yeah. No, it's we, tough. It's I mean, hard, you can't we, yeah. you can't take those chances. Too many bad, you know. Uh, uh, you know, particularly a white coach can have four or five losing seasons and still find a job. A black or coach, or if he gets fired, he's gonna pop up somewhere yeah, else. A, a black wrong. coach has one or two bad seasons, and yeah. you might need a, you're either a lifetime assistant or find a new job yeah. type situation. So it's unfortunate. Hey Barry. Uh, quick hitters, thoughts going towards the playoffs, Battle of L.A. King James. You already know what time it is. Uh, but I know. But, but, Go James. Mission. But, but sometimes Yo, you say you, you talk him? with common did, sense. So did, you, did you see him? I don't know if y'all noticed yeah, lately. Y'all know if y'all <laughs> didn't notice lately, but it ain't none of my business. I only, but y'all brought it up, so we're going to talk about it. Y'all yeah. Yeah. saw what happened. I saw Now, he brought the 40 piece. Yeah. Now, he's starting now. He still can get downhill. Yeah. Easily. Easy. Still can post. Easily. And now he's going to add a 40 footer to his resume. That's incredible. <gasps> it's 17 years. I think to me, it's hard to say that Giannis and leaps and bounds ahead of LeBron from Thank the end. I think Kendrick Perkins might have said something like this because we always devalued LeBron's greatness in the East because it was the East. Right. And the East is some. They say East is weaker than the West. But if you take LeBron, take a look at the team last year when he was hurt and what they did. Obviously, getting AD is a huge help. But they went from dog shit to first place no in the, in the yeah. West. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you gotta, this you gotta look, have the this, same this energy. You know, this is how you know LeBron the GOAT. The guy that he traded to New Orleans, the and the guy he, he traded, traded. for. <laughs> That's what everybody say. So I'm, 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 I'm a co-signer. The guy that LeBron traded that went to went to New Orleans. LeBron mm -hmm. traded. Bi, him. Lonzo, Josh Hart, mm -hmm. and now they got Zion. LeBron went back there minus AD and beat him. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's how you know you're good. <laughs> Look <laughs> at Cleveland. How Cleveland? How Cleveland looking without LeBron? Dog now LeBron had maybe less. And took that to the finals. Man, the Lakers good this year. Got a lot to do with AD. Don't do that. Yeah, I, I'm don't not saying that. AD special, but don't don't you try to diminish Go no, James. You can't. That's you can't. Right. No, you, you, can't. Can't. They, they, you can't do that. He now. makes he the that. engine go. He I definitely mean, makes the engine go. That's it. I mean, he's not supposed to be playing like this in year 17. No, he's not. No. You're not supposed to be leading it. Think about MVP. it. MVP leading the league in assists in year 17. 10.3. John Stockton. Led the league in LCS his last year with year 12. Mm -hmm. John Stockton played 19 years. Mm -hmm. 
He wasn't 6'8", 290. They got to do it. He said 290. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping before his vertical. And, 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 and winning. And winning. And giving for the bit. He, he ain't supposed to be dropping no 34-point triple doubles, getting 40 pieces, and he's still elevating. You yeah. see where he took oh, out from the other night? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you see where he took He took outside the lane. But he's yeah. doing all this shit now yeah. with it, too. And, and all you're 17. This shit now, too. Yeah. Game's I love easier it. easier now when you play I love it. I said like at the AD. very beginning of the season, if he's in a position to where AD is sort of like Jack said, AD is kind of the focal point that this part of the season in the playoffs, he's going to be at his best. Yes. You know, I think he did a good job of riding the team and kind of understanding, showing flashes here and there during the season of obviously what he can do. But to me, he just managed the game so much better this year. Yeah. He made sure everyone else got involved. He made sure AD knows, motherfucker, we're going to come to you yes. in mm-hmm. April and May, so get ready now in December. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he meant to me, his management of the whole season has been brilliant. Talk to me where you think real quick before we get back off track. Mike, Kobe, LeBron. Where are they at for you? I'm going to go, you know, old Goat James. He's one. Because for me, is that you look at the totality. You see, everybody, it's like, it's, it's almost, I even hate talking about, you know, Kobe and LeBron because anytime you talk about Kobe and LeBron, Jordan 6 and 0 in the finals. Kobe got more championships than LeBron. They, oh, they, they always they, got something. They always got something to say. Yeah. But somebody, I mean, eight straight finals, eight straight. That's tough. And the best play, I mean, he, look, I mean, that last year in in uh, in uh, in Cleveland, come on, man, they had no business. They had no business being in the finals, that except for that man's greatness. That was amazing. And and look, when you look at when you look at teams that he's lost to, those Warriors teams, of all the championship teams, that might be one of the top five best dynasty. teams ever. Yeah, no no question. No and LeBron, oh, LeBron lost to the Warriors. Really? Everybody else did too. So, so we expected LeBron to beat LeBron and Jr. and that and, and, and uh, Rodney Hood and Jordan Clarkson and George Hill. We expected him to beat I KD, did. Steph, Clay, Draymond. I did. And Jermaine, really? And Steve Kerr. Yeah, you, you really? got a real coach too. <laughs> yeah, he had a coach. <laughs> and, and when he lost, he lost to uh, San Antonio. So we, what boy. we gonna do with Tim? So Tim Duncan. There's no question. Tim Duncan is the greatest power forward to ever breathe. Mm-hmm. And so he had Tony Parker, he had Manu, Kawhi was just coming onto the scene, yep. and he had Pop. Yep. So he loses that, and be like, oh. So what team that Jordan never played that was that? Good question. I think honestly, Detroit teams were good. They were, were the Warriors good? Yeah, no, nah, no, no. Mm-mm. I'll tell you a team that was good. The Pistons was good. Big Three Celtics. The Pistons was good. When they prime, the you remember them? Good. Were they were they Warriors good? Their yeah. levels are good. They were champions. Were they Warriors good? Okay, which one, KD? I want to know on the, on the on. Pistons. How many Hall of Famers on that team? Who? That Pistons team. The same amount as the, as the, as the, as the Warriors. Look. I'm, I'm just asking a question. You think I, so? Chance? Who, 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 who's your... Who's I'm your, talking about Isaiah. Lyman. Are you talking about... Are you, wait, wait, so, he, was talking about Jordan. he was talking about Jordan. Are you talking, okay, I thought you were talking about LeBron. And yeah. Who no, no, but here's, but here's he said the, Jordan didn't play nobody like, oh. like them. No, but no, 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 no. Detroit, come on now. They had four Hall of Famers. So, so which one, which one of those Hall of Fame? Look, there, look. As a guy in the Hall of Fame, there's levels to Hall of Fame. No question. Don't talk okay. that shit to him, huh? There, there's like Mo like, Cheeks in the Hall of Fame. Oh, no, no. I got better numbers than him okay. as far as points. <laughs> Stack, but here's the thing. I'm just keeping it real. Stack. There's like Jim Brown, Joe Montana Hall of Fame. You know, there's there, there's rooms to it. You know, you go to the Taj Mahal. There are rooms in the Taj Mahal. Right. Everything everything is not housed in in one room. Mm-hmm. So there's levels to this. There's KD. Uh, KD, you talk about a top ten player. When it's right. all said and done, he might be creeping down to the five ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Steph lead Curry, score. Steph Curry. No, no, you know who's gonna be the lead scoring hitter? Man, KD. Oh, go. Man, KD. You think you're gonna get it? I don't think. I don't, I don't think okay. the, the, you see the, how many consecutive seasons he's had? Like who? KD. With the points he's been putting up. Yeah, but well, how many points KD have? Twenty thousand. Mm-hmm. He got twenty thousand, right? We'll he got to have twenty thousand by now. We'll look it up. But think about what go that. Yeah, go about to be yeah. at 40. Yeah, so does he need another party. four years at 25 points or something he'll like that around three. that? Three he'll need with three. <laughs> three, 40,000. So the man going to be top 10, he's going to be number one in points. Mm-hmm. Top five in the Top 10 in reap. Come on. I think that's that. That's where I think people misunderstood is we're talking about a pass first player. Yes, a pass first dude that's in the top ten in assists, but High, still IQ moving level. up, moving Let up. Let that sink in for a second. Pass mm-hmm. first. I want to pass you the ball first. Yes. 
But then I still got more points. Mm -hmm. And still average, and still averaging 20. Because I watched him the other night against uh, uh, the Pelican, and he goes off in the first half. He has 19. But now he comes out in the third quarter, he makes a conscious effort. Yeah. He's so like, you, you know what? Game I need, I need you guys. I need, I'm going to need these guys in the third. Manages the game. And then mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter, he says, okay, now you got me here. Let me bring I'm us finished, home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me bring us home. Mm -hmm. oh, no man, no that. Go. I need to go see Goat play. When the last time you seen him play? NBA Finals. What year? <laughs> Yeah, uh, we went out to Cleveland. Oh yeah, we you, you were there. We working, yeah. working together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, right. That's right. I need, I need to get there. But yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm a poor sport. Yeah. Cause see, you know, I, I, you know, I don't want to be around. Cause I go and they lose, and then somebody know me, and they gonna start you talking. Had his crazy. jersey on. When? Oh, that time, I got like five of them. That jersey on. I got five. I got the whole uniform. I might dress in the whole uniform. I might <laughs> go to the, with the mask too, with the goat mask. <laughs> I'm be at the parade. We go. I'm gonna, be at the, I'm gonna be at the parade in June. You gotta get on the bus then. No, you know you already know they're gonna win the title. Right? Get on Grant the bus. 36 all time right now. 22,000 points. 22,000? Yeah. Almost 23,000. So what year? 22,940. This, this is like what year? 13? No, not that many. I don't nah, think. Yeah. 11. No. Russ 11. is 12, 13. Is he up in there? Yeah. If LeBron, he gotta be year 13. Yeah. Could be LeBron's 17. 36 all time. Look at the goat. Now it's you tough. know, now you know what that is. That's so that sport, that's like what, 11,000, 12,000 behind GOAT right now. Man, KD put up some points now. In a hurry. I mean, this But I like KD is because <laughs> I think him coming off this hurry, injury, bro. his his game has never been based off athleticism. You know what I mean? You take LeBron's athleticism away, that's a lot, but you can't take it away. I mean, he's yeah. in year 17 doing what he's doing. Yeah. But I, the reason why I think KD has a great run and a great chance is because it's never really been based off athleticism for him. It's Just jumpers. Buckets. He gonna still Jumping. be able to elevate and get it off? Oh yeah, he's a, he shoots that big. He's seven he feet tall. That, shoots that, it up here. What you mean? He, 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 what you that mean? That dude's so tall, man. That incredible. Dude, ain't nobody blocking that. No, nah, incredible. I mean, it's, it, that, now that's unfair. Yeah. That's what's he's unfair. A he's a cheat for code. him, for him to be that tall and to be able to shoot the, yeah. his ability to shoot yeah. the ball like that. Now that's unfair. It's a lot. I love music it, wise. Yeah. What kind of music you listen to? Give me your top. Well, tell me what kind of music you listen to first. Then give me your top five artists. I'm old school, bro. See, like guys like listen to stuff to get them going. I couldn't. I pass out. What you like, I, man, I tried to listen. I tried to gospel. I'm like old school. Al Green. Not Al Green, but you know, like Barry White. I listen to Maxwell, yeah. Sade, R&B Thug. That's yeah, the, I, me yeah. too. I'm saying yeah, what? Okay. You kind of neo soulish then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I tried to like when I played. I tried to listen to that stuff. You know, Tupac and get me go. Man, I got passed out. Yeah, I get too amped. Cause see, I don't, I've never had a cup of coffee. Can you imagine me on coffee? Yeah, I can't. I never did. I don't like coffee either. I can't. So I, I get too pumped up. So I need something to like just Mellow you. Yeah, just keep me going. And the plus, coffee. I mean, I, I, I mean, I know all these artists. I know the baby, little baby, and yeah. all these blue. I, I know Rain. all these. Yeah. Oh no, Weezy, my guy. Yeah. Now, that's that's my guy. But I gotta slow it down. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, too I'm much too, for your heart. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm too. <laughs> I, I get too, 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 too wrapped up. Yeah. <clears throat> you already geek. Top five sneakers. I know you're a big sneakerhead. <laughs> That's where, you, oh where a lot of your money goes. Hey, a lot of my money goes to sneakers. You a Jordan 1 guy for sure. Hey, you are, it's hard to go wrong with the Jordan 1. Right. It's hard to go wrong. Um, I got the frags on today. Uh, I, like the, I like the Duck series. Anything that they do with the Ducks, that's a, that's, everybody wants that shoe. Mm -hmm. um, I like the LeBron MVP pack. I like the LeBron South Beaches. I like the Jordan, Jordan 2. The original. Mm. So you um, know he's a sneaker. He know the names well, he and all it back that. Too. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, I like the three. The, you know, most people love the, the if you're a sneakerhead, most people love the Jordan one. Yeah. I like the, th I I like like the threes, threes and fours. I like the threes. threes I like the threes. Yeah, yeah. I like the threes. I like the fours. It's hard to go wrong with Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I wear a lot of Jordan. But oh, 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 bro, I, got, I got Kobe's. As a matter of fact, um, I got a pair of Kobe's when he was wearing the Hirachis. Mm -hmm. I got those Skull. signed from him when he was uh, uh, in Denver played. So you got classic runners too. You got some classic runners. Yeah. I seen you. Oh, I too. like the I like the Air Max. I, no, I, I just like shoes. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it's a it's a bad habit to have. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. It's expensive. A, it, it is very expensive. But I got, don't, everybody got their thing though. Look, I ain't got a, I, ain't, I don't have a bowl. Yep. And right now, I ain't, you know, I ain't putting nobody else's kids through college. 
You know what I mean by that. <laughs> uh, so, so right now, you know, I got a little, I got a little, a little extra money. Play with it. I got a little, a little extra money. Right. <laughs> I got a little extra money. You know, yes, a little sir. Extra, yeah. So that, that's my thing right now. So yeah. you know, probably if I find somebody to settle down with, you know, probably just sneak a game. Mm -hmm. But right now, you know, what I'm looking for, you know, I hadn't found it yet. I'm, but I'm looking. Keep looking. Yeah. Speaking of that, who's I mean, single man? You know what I mean? Out here in L.A., mm -hmm. well dressed. Kicks, kick me, kicks I, do what they do. Who's your celebrity crush? I didn't, uh, Matt, excuse, I don't mean to interrupt you, but ask him. I didn't show him so many DMs, people hitting me. About, and, uh, about, about uh, him. About, yes. uh, yeah, about that, him. That boy, a killer out but, here. This is what I tell women that I go out on a date with. I say, at this juncture of my life right now, I'm looking for someone to partner with, not sponsor. Mm -hmm. Got to bring mm -hmm. something to the table. So that's where I am in my life. Yeah. I understand, look, uh, you ain't, I'm, I'm saying you, you don't need to make. Two hundred thousand, but just something. Contribute. Buy, buy me a gift, but not with my money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even Say if you don't, it, 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 even if you don't do nothing, but buy me a pair of sneakers. Yeah. Don't buy money? me. Don't buy me cologne. I don't wear cologne. So, cologne. I haven't worn cologne in probably thirty five years. I don't really? wear cologne. But buy me something with your money. Mm -hmm. If it's nothing but a, a Lululemon shirt, I'm I'm cool with that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the, but don't you? How you gonna use my money to buy me a gift and say I got you something, baby? <laughs> no, no, you picked out something. Yeah. You didn't give yeah. me anything. You picked it out. Uh, but you know that's that's the hardest thing. I was in a relationship when I first got out here, and that ended, and so it was it was tough. And so um, putting yourself back out there on the market because I was out of I was out, out of the market for ten years, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's different now. Mm. You know, it's you know, I, I feel like a you know, what's acceptable. You know, to talk. How do you talk? How do you approach somebody? So I get I get a little nervous because you know, if you say something that you know, maybe it was that too aggressive, but I'm not aggressive enough. Yeah, yeah And yeah. so I, I, it, it's just hard. So you know, you just gotta. It, it's tough, man. Deep it's breath. tough. Gotta Deep let them breath. choose you. Smoke let a black and mild. You. Take a shot. Let them choose yeah. me. Yeah, just let them choose you. They been choosing they, they, ain't nobody, ain't nobody choosing me. They, they <laughs> <laughs> so back to the question. So who's your, who, do you have a celebrity? Do you have a crush out there? Celebrity crush. Man, everybody know my celebrity crush. Obviously, one would be old Nico. You know, that's what we call. Nicole we don't say Murphy. Nicole. We say Nico. Nicole Murphy. Nicole. I like Regina Hall. Yep. Uh oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Like uh -oh. <laughs> what'd you uh -oh. say? We both like her. <laughs> nah, we can't both like her. Hey, dude, let me ask I got a girlfriend. It. I got a girlfriend. Uh, well, hey, you, you, you I'm, off, I'm off the market, but I still like her. <laughs> okay, those are probably like the only ones in my in my age. Just two? That's it, man. I mean, I, I it, it comes and goes. I mean, sometimes I mean, you be in these mood where you like. You know, certain five type. ten mm -hmm. and thick, and then the next minute you like five two and petite. Yeah. So it just you know just would go with the wind. Yeah, I just I just want to look. I just want to find somebody and be able to come home to and say, and when I come home, baby, I'm home, and when she or when she comes home, baby, baby, I'm home, and I get a kid. That's what I'm looking for. Making each other better. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I'm looking. Yeah. I'm looking for somebody to, to grow with. Jack yeah. has found that. Yep, I have. I, I ain't bro. married yet, but I've I've yeah. definitely. Found yeah, you married that. yet? You just ain't made it. You just ain't you got ain't this got You married? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you you hey, you live with somebody long yeah. you live? Yeah, yeah you married? <laughs> right, facts. <laughs> man, we want to thank you, man, for your time today coming bro, on. We man. know you're really busy. Thank man, you for coming and joining us. Yes, man. We appreciate it, man. They've been been asking a lot to us. Man, that's a wrap. All the smoke. Hall of Famer. Uncle Shay Shay. Shannon Sharp. Uncle Shay Shay. You can catch this on Showtime Basketball YouTube or all platform streaming podcasts. All them boys. And we gonna do something before two sub. Yeah, we are. This life was all I ever wanted. I'm not leaving. Not yet. I was hoping you'd say that. We gotta hit the streets, make some money. People like us. Destroy people like him. Buckle up. Get Showtime free at Showtime.com.